Are you ready? Stand by. Hey everybody, Dave Hartman here, and welcome to the Three Gun Show. This is episode 216, recorded at the Colorado Three Gun Championship with Adam Reiser. And we talk about how to manage your match logistically, physically, and mentally to ensure your best performance. This podcast is brought to you by IWI. I'm so excited to partner with IWI to shoot the Red October Kalashnikov Championship when Jeremy, their VP of sales, hit me up and he's like, Dave, did you shoot the uh, Red October match last year? And I was like, yeah, man, I did. And he's like, do you want to shoot it again this year with one of our Galils? And I was like, yeah, man, that sounds cool and all, but I think it's just for AKs. <laughs> that statement is pretty uh, pretty silly, knowing what I know now, which the Galil is an AK. It's just the modern version of the AK. So IWI, Israeli Weapons Industries, uh, has been modifying their Galil for about 40 years now. So where Russia took the AK, they're like, here, this is the uh, the best we can do, and they never touched it again. IWI has been modifying this thing, and the current version is the Ace, which is what I have. Um, since I knew I was going to shoot this in competition and I was going to throw a Vortex Optic on top, I knew that I wanted the, the 5.56 model. Let me tell you why. So the Red October Kalashnikov Championship, any optic you put on your rifle puts you in open division. So I figured if I'm going to be in open anyway, let's get something I can use the Magpul P Mags and the D60, which fit just fine in this 5.56 version. You can hear it in the background. So Magpul D60s fit all your normal um, 5.56, 223 magazines fit this thing. Uh, Midwest Industries makes a cool rail for this, and they sent one out for me to uh, to put on this rifle and try it out. Really digging it. Uh, ALG sent a trigger, which is for the 762 by 39. I'm still kind of modifying it to uh, to fit this receiver. KNS sent a adapter plate for the butt stock, which is awesome because I've got a Dissident Arms fully adjustable stock that I've I've worked this thing to fit me perfectly, which is pretty awesome, especially when you're shooting a, uh, a scope up top, the Razor 1 to 6 like I am. And uh, Rise Armament sent a muzzle break for this thing, which is pretty sweet. So uh, IWI conned me into shooting one of their, their Galil rifles, and I'm really pumped about it because after shooting this thing in a few matches, I'm really digging the way that it handles and uh, and how all the the weight is back at the center of this thing because this is a milled receiver and it's a milled steel receiver so the receiver is a lot heavier heavier than an AR-15 but the uh, the where it puts the weight is uh, is fun to handle it handles really well so looking forward to shooting this at the Red October Kalashnikov Championship if you want to check one out yourself IWI.us is where you can find that. And uh, more good stuff coming from the Three Gun Show and IWI in the future. This podcast is brought to you by Breda USA, Italian shotguns that are the best in the world. And this is a shotgun tech tip from Team Breda. Hey, this is Dave Harmon from the Three Gun Show, and I'm with Tina Martin Nims from Team Breda, and we are going to learn about choke selection. So before you go out to the match, you want to make sure that you have an understanding of how. Um, what your chokes are patterned at. So what I like to do is I take, I have my three main chokes that I usually use, which is a spreader, an IC, an improved concylinder, or, and a mod. And I set my targets out at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And it's just like a knockover steel and a flipper. And I test to see what those cho how they perform at those distances with the ammo that I typically use. And so when I go out onto a stage, I already know that at say 35 yards, I can use my mod choke and knock it out and I'll be all right, ready to go. Awesome, all right, well that's your tech tip from Tina Martin Nims of Team Breda. Check out Breda's B12i three gun ready inertia driven shotgun at BredaUSA.com. That's B-R-E-D-A. Thank you for joining me here on the Three Gun Show, the world's largest three-gun podcast. 
This, this show is purpose built for you to learn about practical shooting while you're on your commute at the gym or even at work, maybe walking the dog. Who knows? Take the dog out for a walk. Everybody likes dogs. Every single Wednesday, there's a new episode waiting for you to download, listen to, and learn. By the way, there has been three bonus Match Recon podcasts since last week's show. Um, Match Recon with Di Muller, A Girl and a Gun, Fall Fest, with Josh Tarrant for Blue Ridge, and with uh, with myself and my pal Wade Jones for the Red October Kalashnikov Championship. Uh, the Red October one dropped this morning as I'm recording this, and uh, I've gotten several texts from from people today that said they uh, they almost went off the road at the stories we told at the uh, at the end and the funny things that happened at the match. So, for those of you that are patrons, you uh, you've already heard these because uh, you get to hear those real time. If you haven't heard them yet, go check them out. Uh, I'll have links to actually just go to threegunshow.com. That's where everything is, or find it in your your favorite podcast player, and uh, be sure to subscribe. Um, and by the way, Google Play is going away. So if you listen on Google Play and you've messaged me and said it's not updating, it's because they're no longer supporting it. So Google Podcast is their new app. Um, I think we're in there now. Search for us. I'll probably do that after the show here and figure it out. But follow us on Instagram, Facebook, etc. Subscribe on YouTube and uh, like all the posts, comment and interact with us. We'd love to have you. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, I respond to all that stuff myself. So that's that's the best way to get a hold of me, I guess. And for those of you that want to keep the shows flowing in the future, support the Three Gun Show on Patreon. You can find links to all that stuff at threegunshow.com slash episode 216. And uh, here we go. So this this last week has been an incredibly busy one for me. I'm simultaneously trying to uh, to keep up the, the content with the podcast here, schedule future podcasts, as well as be assistant match director for the Big Ben Blast and Dash. You've heard me talk about this one before, so I won't mention it too much more. But uh, we got a match coming up in two weeks here. That'll be the weekend after the Red October Kalashnikov Championship. So I'm traveling for that for the Red October match, coming back, and then I'll be on the range all week for the uh, Big Ben Blast and Dash, which is a 5K running gun that we're doing here in Colorado. Whoo! Busy time. It's good to be busy, though, and lots of cool stuff happening here at the Three Gun Show. And uh, we bring all that fun stuff to you in podcast form, in video form, on the socials, all that good stuff. Now, on to this week's show. Adam Riser is back on the podcast. I always enjoy having Adam on because when when Adam and I are going to be in the same place, Adam's a smart guy, and he's like, hey, Dave, you're going to be at this match. What do you think about this topic? And uh, it's it's generally a good one. Sometimes we need to work it out. I don't usually do any of the hard lifting. Adam does all that, which <laughs> is another reason I love him so much. But uh, I really like this uh, this podcast. This one um, was important for me and should be at the top of everyone's mind. We talk about making your schedule for the year, mitigating burnout, uh, plus like high level stuff like mental game parts of it, pro tips for flying. Uh, temper tantrums <laughs> and and stage planning like step by step. Adam has like a really cool analytical mind, and uh, we call this the match management episode. And it goes into much much more than that. Uh, but you're gonna like it, so sit tight, enjoy it. Let me know what you think at threegunshow.com, and enjoy this podcast with Adam Riser. Adam, Dave, <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. It's good to have you. Yeah, good to be here. Happy to be in air conditioned building. It's awesome. Yeah, this is great. We uh, so we we found this nice shady place outside, shady place outside, <laughs> and uh, we were gonna record the podcast there, and the wind kicked up. So yeah. we're like, oh, let's uh, let's see if we can find somewhere else that's a little quiet. And there's air conditioning. This is great. So we've yeah. been on the range for two days at the Colorado Three Gun Championship in 90 degree heat. So this is a nice change. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Nice cold beer. <laughs> we're we're in a good place. <laughs> nice. Well, um, one of the uh, one of the topics that we uh, you and I have talked about recently is something that I could have used before this match. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys need to go to Dave's Facebook page and see his video stage eight. Yeah, it's on Instagram as well. Yeah. I I, uh, I had a little trouble, and uh, so we're here to talk about match management. Mm-hmm. And uh, for those of you who don't know Adam, you should go back and listen to the previous show. I'll put the the link in the show notes, but. Uh, 
uh, Adam was uh, was is 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 an instructor at the TPC, and uh, he um, has shot all over the country as a uh, as a representative <laughs> of several companies, mm -hmm. and so um, we seem to run it into each other everywhere that we go. Yep. And now you're in my home state in Colorado. It's awesome. This is my first Colorado match. It's fantastic. Is it really? It is, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. What do you think? I'm a little sketched out with the whole. Uh, are my uh, magazines legal thing? <laughs> well. it's a little, that's a little scary, but no, it's, it's awesome. It's, yeah, it's, this match has been great. It's something we generally don't talk about. Oh. We don't talk about it on recording for sure. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it is kind of weird because, uh, so for those that don't know, yeah, um, 2013, we had a magazine ban go into effect here in Colorado. Um, you cannot bring any new magazines into the state as a uh, retailer, wholesaler, or whatever um, that are going to be distributed in the state. So if you have like an online business and you ship to Texas, Wyoming, et cetera, you can do all that, but you can't sell them retail in the state. But the way it's written is transfer, which transfers way open. So like I can't give you a magazine. Mm -hmm. I can't, and you can't bring them here because you transferred them to the state. Mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's, really messed up yeah. but it's not enforced yeah so that's the weird part yeah and then uh but the the it's it's funny because you know you talk to a lot of guys that shoot here in colorado and they're like oh it's okay it's not enforced nothing is enforced until, until it is. it's enforced <laughs> exactly yeah. so it's one of those things like it's not a problem until it's the first time it's a problem and then it's a big problem you don't want to be the first guy no. no no nobody wants to be that guy no exactly and you don't want to be the first sportsman to do it too you know because oh, yeah. th it's been applied several different times for uh people that are already committing crimes mm -hmm. you know as like adderon right we're just yeah. gonna throw everything at them uh but you know you don't want to be the uh the first guy that's just minding his own business and oh, all yeah. of a sudden the the d60 <laughs> gets you so into, into well, some hot luckily water luckily you can't shoot a d60 in tack at kevin's match yeah which is awesome i had to do a rifle reload on the clock for the first time in like three years which is rad <laughs> I think that's great. I think I think they should not be in tech. I think you should have to I reload do a rifle. It is a skill, just like reloading the pistol and the shotgun. You know, okay. it's uh, so I don't think reloading is a skill. <laughs> <laughs> First off, is that because you're not skilled at it, or because yes. it's not a skill? <laughs> it's because I'm not skilled at it. It's because I use that D60 or the big uh, 40 40 round P mag crutch. Mm -hmm. You know, anywhere like I everything. can. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, I also don't think that drums or quad stack magazines um belong in tac mm -hmm. or limited mm -hmm. for that matter um so it is good to see that rule set here and the the part that's difficult for me is that it's a different rule set you know mm -hmm. and like those quirky rule sets like no matter where you go yeah you know those little things are are uh something you got to watch out for like uh land win uh dissident arms yeah got bumped open got bumped from to tack. Lim limited open yeah got bumped to limb open oh man well th and that's that's kind of part of the the match management thing is that you know the homework like i actually have a little thing on my phone i read kevin's entire rule set front to back and i made a little note of like what are the penalties for different targets mm -hmm. what kind of weird you know like mag restrictions uh you know there's something in there about the silo which i don't use but there's a bunch of very specific, like, this is okay and this is not type stuff. And I want to know all of that going in. Yeah. 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 So that's a, that's a good thing to talk about. Um, and I, I fall into the trap of, like, most matches are so similar that, yeah. you know. Oh, tack ta is tack. Yeah. I'll just well, go shoot some tack and I'll be fine. Exactly. Yeah. And I find that I take less care the more matches I shoot. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I, I have the, the um, illusion that I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Right? And all so... Right. Like we're we're for for example this morning we're I'm first up on the uh, all shotgun stage mm -hmm. and there's a spinner on there mm -hmm. and this match limits it limits your shot to the largest size is seven and a half it's one and an eighth ounce and it's thirteen hundred fifty feet per second mm -hmm. right so I um I've got this box of like extreme long range that's seven and a half but it's ounce and a quarter I was like oh dang can't mm -hmm. use that. And then I hear in the in the walkthrough, the uh, um, RO told us, like, um, it's a five-second penalty if you use anything other than seven and a half. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, only a yeah. five-second penalty? Yeah. When I can only have eight rounds of my gun, that saves me a quad load. Yeah. So Garrison England busts out the, uh, <laughs> the number sixes. But um, I was honestly surprised by that. It's only a five-second penalty because that's, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere else well, they give you a 45-second penalty. Well, it's per or shot. 
Yes, it's per so shot. So if it takes you more than one, you're eating ten, and you know you're you're, you're shooting against a sixty second penalty target, and it's costing you five seconds every time you shoot at it. Like that math gets pretty nasty in a hurry. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. If the add, subtract, divide. Yeah, yeah. If you need a calculator to figure out if it's a good idea for you to shoot a certain <laughs> load, you should probably just stick with whatever's <laughs> not going to cast you penalties. Yeah. So I, I just took uh took one round out with me mm -hmm. and uh, and did it. So no big deal there. But that five seconds does save a uh, save a quad load, saves yeah. you from fumbling, saves you know totally. that that kind of stuff. Um, screwing with a uh, uh, a target that's far away saves mm -hmm. you from choking up to mod and then maybe not hitting birds. So there was a lot of benefits to it. Mm -hmm. But uh. I was I was a little disappointed in myself that I found that out on the stage before I was going to shoot. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and this is a club match with a rule set that I've shot several times. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, initially I heard it was supposed to be a match DQ. Yes. And the, and I heard that it as just well. got changed pretty recently. So, so maybe you knew going in. Huh? And yeah. I don't know. I guess I never. I guess you know in in a I don't consider it in a club match because I wouldn't consider gaming some something that hard in a club match. You don't game that hard in a club match. No, no, no you're not club matching right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but then the uh, the other thing is that the uh, uh, targets are never that far o or the spinners are never That's pretty that far, far away. Spinner. Yeah, yeah. And they always put them really close for the uh, you know because in club matches we yeah have you a don't want to make the new guys cry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess I've never really thought about exactly how much um, you know how hard to game that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're here to talk about match management. Yep. It starts, apparently, by reading the rules. How, well, how far out are you planning? So you have a big match schedule. I have a big match schedule. I, it's difficult I'm to planning get a the whole big year scope. in the fall before. Okay. So the, the first thing that I do, um, so my, my main gig is actually climbing, like rock climbing and alpine climbing. I do a, a few multi-week trips a year. I mm -hmm. went to Alaska this year. I'm going to Canada in a couple of weeks. So I put everything on a calendar and I figure out where I can actually shoot matches in that calendar. Um, so that's the first thing that I do. And then I start looking at all of the matches that I might want to shoot. And I, I literally just make a list. Like, this sounds cool. This sounds cool. I heard about this thing. This is within driving distance. This requires getting on a plane. I kind of start playing that, you know, um, uh, you know, benefit reward thing there. Mm -hmm. And then I start plotting those matches on the calendar. And then, so when matches start overlapping, I'm like, all right, this one's close. This one's far. This one sounds really cool. This one sounds kind of dumb. I got some friends going to this one. Uh, this one's natural terrain, which I tend to like more than base stage stuff. Cause I'm not good at the super fast little hosey things. Um, and I start just picking which one of those matches that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then my new, yeah, we're, we're talking major matches, right? Yeah, we're talking major matches. Uh, club matches, I basically shoot, like, if I happen to be in town that weekend, then I'll shoot a club match. But uh, most weekends when it's not a million degrees, I'm going to be climbing or biking because that's, you know, it's kind of like that beautiful spring, fall weather. That's like the prime climbing uh, season. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't rock climb hard when it's 100 degrees outside. Like, it's just, you, you get sweaty, there's friction, it's a problem. And um, so the club matches are, like, if I happen to be there, I'll shoot a club match, and if I'm not, then I won't. But they don't go on the, the calendar. So um, then my new personal rule this year, after last year going a little bit crazy, is um, I try not to shoot more than one major in the same month. Mm -hmm. And I have a very strict no majors on back-to-back -back weekends rules this mm. year. So la last year, I got back from a two-week – or excuse me, a three-week climbing trip in Canada with my wife – I got home. I was home for 36 hours, unpacked from that trip, packed for Rocky Mountain, drove to Rocky Mountain, shot Rocky Mountain, drove home. I was home for 48 hours, unpacked from Rocky Mountain, repacked, flew to, to uh, Park City, Kentucky, and shot the Pro-Am, flew back. I was home for a whole weekend, and then flew to Missouri for Generation 3 gun. And, like, at the end of August, I was like, I just kind of don't want to shoot guns anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. it, just, it, it just took all the fun right out of it. So I, I want enough time to decompress. If I'm having some gun issues, I don't want to have to fix that in, like, a 48-hour period before I get into playing. Yeah, else, no so. kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny thing, I'm, I'm looking at almost the exact same kind of thing. For the next six weeks, I'll be gone, uh, you know, four days out of the week at least mm -hmm. for five of those weeks. Mm -hmm. So well, I, luckily your guns are on like a top. So yeah, <laughs> it seemed like a great idea when I had guns that ran. But yeah. So yeah, now, um, now I'm looking at, well, the joke I was making was that once Rocky Mountain's done, I'm going to quit three gun. Mm -hmm. It's just a joke, but yeah. because you know, you're it's consecutive. Oh yeah. It's weeks a new of last travel. match in there. 
Well, yeah, that's the last. That's the last match. This is the first match, mm -hmm. and that's the last one. So, oh man, yeah, Rocky Mountain six weeks from right now, and I'll be gone five weeks uh, be because of that. I know it sounds like a good prop to have. It's one of those high quality problems. But yeah. it is. Oh it no, is something to manage. Well, well it's it, like burnout management is a real deal. Yeah. I mean, you and I have both seen really good shooters like come and blossom and just like vanish off the face of the earth because they just took all the fun out of it. And it's like I used to be a climbing guide, and the reason that I stopped. Uh, guiding climbs was I started hating climbing. Mm -hmm. I'd have a day off, and the last thing I wanted to do was go climb. I was like, I just want to sit on the couch and drink beer and watch a movie in a nice air conditioned building. I'm going to get up at two o'clock in the morning to <laughs> climb something. And uh, and yeah, so you you really have to uh, keep it fun. Like make sure that you have enough time there that it's still an enjoyable thing. It's super important. Mm -hmm. yep. And I think your one match a month mm -hmm. and no consecutive weekends is a good rule. Mm -hmm. um, Last year, I kind of felt a little bit of the uh, the burnout as well, um, coming off of Gen Three, which mm -hmm. is kind of kind of ironic. Mm -hmm. But um, I set that same rule, and unfortunately, <laughs> it didn't work out because I say yes too easily. Yeah, too nice of a guy, Dave. Yeah, too I know. Nice I know. But again, it's it's high quality problem, right? Yeah. So <coughs> yeah. Exactly. I know. I don't well, want to sound like what was. And you're in a slightly me, different situation because like your entire job and everything is sort of attached to that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little bit different than me where it's like I'm a climber and then I want to go shoot these matches and I I want to make sure I keep enjoying both of those things. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I want to keep enjoying three gun as well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> can you imagine if it started to suck? Dude, or that was, like I don't want to No, like this is not a thing that you can do if it's not fun anymore. No. Like there's there's no money in it. There's no fame. There's no yeah. nothing. Like there's so it's, no reason to do this. It's if you're too not expensive. Fun. It's physically taxing. It takes yeah. up a ton of time. Yeah. And especially if you want to be good, it takes up even more time. Oh yeah. So yeah, why would you want to be a part of it if it, it wasn't fun? So yeah, exactly. So yeah, okay. So. Sorry, we we got off on a little uh, little tangent there, but back up to uh, taking Kay. the calendar. Okay. So once you once you've got your calendar, once mm -hmm. you pick out all the matches that you might want to shoot, yep. like how do you narrow them down to the ones you're actually going to shoot? Um. So I narrow them down based on. Uh, you know, I'll tend to lean towards anything that I can drive to, obviously, because as soon as a plane is involved, um, everything gets a lot more expensive. Uh, and then I will start um, calling up friends that have shot the matches if it's something I haven't shot uh, and, you know, see, like, what they thought about the match. Uh, I'll listen to, like, the Match Recon episodes mm -hmm. and see what the match seems like. Um, I'll see who might be going to that match because if I can go shoot with... Like, I, I prefer... If my squad had, like one or two friends and one or two people who um, like took three guns seriously, not even like had to be good, but just like took it seriously doing stage walkthroughs and other, you know, they're good resetters, good squad mates, like the kind of people you want to squad with. Mm -hmm. If I have a couple of those people and then a bunch of people that I've never met, so I can kind of expand that umbrella of, yeah. you know, friends and three gun, like that's my ideal squad. So if I, if I'm going to like, yeah, this, and I'm like, oh, sweet, like, who's going to this match that I know? Awesome, you know, I can squat that person, like, that'll help. So, um, but a lot of it is just, you know, personal preference, location, uh, you know, in the overall expense of just traveling to that match. So it's like, if there's, if there's a really cool match in Park City, Kentucky, and there's a really cool match in St. George, probably going to drive four hours to St. George to get on a place, plane and flying to Park City, Kentucky. Right. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That uh, that is what I think most people do. From from my observation, you know, there's there's pockets of three gun everywhere. It seems like most people shoot within maximum ten hours. Yep. yep. Of where they live. Yeah, for sure. And that's why you've got like the the western pockets of of three gun, mm -hmm. and then you've got like. The Texas pocket, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then you know, and then uh, uh, East Coast and, and uh, Midwest, yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the kind of the way I look at it. But it it is it's it's super regional, but it does really complicate things when you think about flying for three gun. As soon as a plane is involved, it's it's a big deal for sure. And mm -hmm. that's definitely one of the things. Um, as soon as as soon as I do pick a match that involves a plane, I immediately book that ticket. Mm -hmm. I want to get that as far in advance as I can because I want to make sure um, for any match that I'm traveling to, I want to make sure that I can get there early enough to walk stages the day before because it big complicated. There's some matches where you can kind of get away without that. Like some of the UML stuff, you can just sort of show up early in the morning and figure it out. But like something like this, I mean, that horseshoe stage, it took us like an hour to figure out what yeah. we we're going to do there because there's so many options. Um, Luckily, I got there when you were like 55 minutes into it. Yeah, so. I was like, hey, Dave, this is what you're doing. <laughs> Here's option B if you want it. They're both fine. 
Um, yeah, or you can like honestly like have a friend that you trust to like walk the stages. That's a lot that's, of trust. That's a lot of trust for sure. And, and then you're putting pressure on your friend too. I was actually uh, I shot my I was the first shooter on the first stage on the first day at, at this match, and I found a target on the stage while I was making ready that I did not know it was there. Oh, you're kidding. So like the little streaming video they did, I have like, you know, the shitty like five minute GM make ready where I'm like, that's because I like literally found a target while I was making ready <laughs> that I had no idea was there, <laughs> which we'll get to later. I got a little lazy and something that should have done. But yeah, so I want to make sure that I can uh, fly in or drive into that match. Um, it, at least like noon, one o'clock ish the day before. So I have that whole afternoon to walk stages and then I want to make sure that my flight out is at the very earliest, like really, really, really late on the last day of the match. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to be that guy at the prize table like, oh, God, I hope they hurry up. I got a flight in three hours. Like, yeah. that, that guy doesn't have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I joke all the time on the podcast, like, that guy is like, are you new here? Mm -hmm. Is this your first match? Yeah, they're like, man, I hope they wrap this prize table up. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, they yeah. got like 100 sponsors to thank first. and Well, yeah. not only that, but it's all the stuff leading up to that particular moment in time. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, scores could be laid, oh. stage could be laid. Reshoots, could rain, the wind blew some Resho stuff yeah. down. Yeah. Like, yeah, there could be a tornado. Last year there was like torrential downpour here. That, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's there's all kinds of Murphy's Law type things. Uh -huh. And when you're counting on, like, if everything goes right, I'll be able to get a flight at 2 p.m. Oh, it's man. Like, no, no, bro. Like, no. Mid, yeah, you're red eye at best. Yeah. I try to just straight up do the next morning. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the way to go for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so then once you've uh, once you've booked all your, your flight um, flight mm -hmm. stuff, if you need need to do it or you yep. have – no, I'm driving. You've got your, your crew of people that you're going to be shooting with. Yep. Yeah, and same thing applies, like, get the Airbnb ahead of time, you know, rental cars, whatever, like, just – Get that stuff in the bag. Mm -hmm. So you you book all like all these logistics like in the in the fall. Yeah, I booked the Airbnb for our house at Nationals like six months in advance. Okay, because I just straight up don't want to worry about that. And I got like the Google, I'm I'm like the most alien type dude you've ever met. And so I got the Google Calendar with like I'm signed up for this match. Yes, I'm paid. Yes, I'm squatted. Yes, like oh, these no are the way. people on my squad. These are their phone numbers. Like we got the Airbnb. It's booked. Like. I have, like, the checklist in Google Calendar. Like, if I click on the match, it has, like, what's been done and what hasn't. So I don't ever be like, oh, crap, I never squatted. And then I end up on a, you know, bunch of people I'd go and shoot with or something. So, right. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I am I'm book that stuff as far in advance as I can. So and I learned if you're the guy that arranges the Airbnb, when people say yes, get their money. Yeah. <laughs> right then and there. <laughs> Dude. That, I learned that at SHOT Show. Oh, like, man. You know, there there's a lot of people that say like, "Oh yeah, I'll I'll mm -hmm. get you back." All you totally. know, we we just handshake. We don't need no, anything written down. Yeah, Do in, get, get in their the money shooting right industry. There. Get money right our, away. Our our house for nationals. The entire population of the house turned over twice. Oh, you're kidding. Oh yeah, eight person house turned over twice. Jeez. And I gotta say, the people that bailed at the last minute still paid. So. Oh really? Hats off to them. Yeah. So that's that that's like next level. I appreciated that quite a bit. That's pretty. Incredible. Otherwise, I would have eaten like. He's like, oh, yeah, it's going to be like $100 a person for like the whole thing. And it was going to be like $500 for me. So that would have sucked. That's exactly <laughs> what happened to me at SHOT Show. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so pro tip. Yeah. <laughs> Get also, money right when you do it. The universal rule, and uh, I think my buddies and I made this up. The universal rule is if you book the Airbnb or the uh, VRBO, mm -hmm. you get to choose the bedroom you sleep in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that should go without saying. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Also, you have... You have a checklist in, in Google. Like, is this mm -hmm. something you create yourself, or is this, like, a, does it have a function where you create create a checklist based on a No, it's just a in, calendar like, date? If, if, you, if you click on the calendar thing when you're, like, setting up the calendar, there's a spot for notes. Oh. And I have, it's just, like, you know, transportation, did I ship ammo, am I signed up, am I squatted, am I paid, do I have a place to stay? Dude, that is And it's just, like, I just, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got a lot of stuff going on in my life, man. I'll tell you what. I totally agree. You know why I'm so checklisty? Because uh, uh, if you're not checklisty when you're rock climbing, you could die. If you're not checklisty when you get off a plane in Alaska, and you're like, I don't know, maybe don't have some crampons or something, then right. you're not climbing shit, and it right. costs you like many thousands of dollars to get there. <laughs> so this hasn't actually happened to me, but it happened to one of my partners. We had to go like tent to tent, like begging for spare gear. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, like, you, you don't, and that just, so now I just have a, um, Google Keep is 
it is the shit. It's like a checklist app that you can have on your computer and on your phone. Okay. And I have a checklist for everything. So I got my shooting checklist, and it's like this is all my shooting stuff, and I was like make sure I show up with everything that I need every single time. Dude, nothing sucks that. worse than like, I'm going to go do some load development and driving two hours out to the damn desert and forget your chrono. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. Oh, I've yeah. actually shown up to uh, to club matches with like no shotgun am- ammo at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. This is this match all slugs because I brought a ton of slugs. <laughs> yeah, we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Huh, checklist. So checklist. You're, you're a total checklist guy. I'm a total checklist On guy. everything. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fully. Okay. Yeah. So what's what's your uh, what's your packing uh, checklist okay. look like for for a match like this? Like how far out are you are you running down that checklist of things that you need to bring? Um, like how far in advance time wise? Yeah. Uh, the big thing is the ammo because uh, if you are uh, flying to a match that mm-hmm. usually involves shipping ammo, and I want to do that at least two weeks out. Uh, so I'll find out, you know, if there's a hotel that you can ship ammo to, if there's somebody local who can pick up for you. Usually, you know, most places will have, like, and or ship ammo addresses, blah, yeah. blah, blah, and they'll bring it to the thing. Um, so with that. Have you ever run into a problem with shipping ammo somewhere? No. Like, it wasn't no. there when you showed up? It's always been a thing. I've We've had some places that um, have kind of, like, freaked out a little bit about, like, shipping ammo uh, when we've shown up at UPS. And we're like, oh, what's in here? And we're like, ammo. And they're like, oh, my God, you can't. I'm like, yeah, no, you totally can. It's got the thing on the side. So the little... um. I can't remember the name of the label, but it's the little triangular label. It's like a hazmat label. Yeah, I actually just have like the PDF of that on my phone, so I can just like, hey, can you print <laughs> one of these and we'll just tape it to the side of the box because like they will not ship it without that. Huh. So yeah, so you gotta tape that little hazmat label. And shipping ammo isn't nearly as bad as I thought. Like, um, straight up shipping like put together ammo. There's no extra charge in UPS. Right. Yeah. So you just put it in a UPS box and take it down, and make sure it has that label on it, and ship it out. And I've I've never had a problem. But I want to ship it far enough ahead. That if something happens and that package doesn't show up, then I can ship another package. Oh, okay. So, yep. so you're talking like a couple of weeks out? Yeah, and I usually ship. Um, I I try to basically ship enough ammo for the match. If I if there's some stuff I won't ship, I'll usually not ship shotgun shells because it's really easy just to roll in and buy some shotgun shells. Yeah. And then I'll usually f- almost every Walmart has like exactly anything. you can like go and find some double A's or something. Um, uh, but the mo- the main thing is I want to sh- make sure that my match rifle ammo shows up because. Um, your gun likes your ammo, and my match ammo ain't gonna run in your gun, or it might, but you can't right. you can't count on that. Your holds are gonna be different, so like that's the key thing. So I usually actually just fly with that because I don't have to worry about it getting lost in transit or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then ship your pistol stuff and all blaster rifle. Ammo. Yeah, and a uh, new tip I learned is if you know you're gonna be overweight, you can ship your uppers and fly with your lowers. Huh? Right, because your upper's not a gun. There's a pro tip. Yeah, yeah. So if you know your bag's gonna be overweight, just fly with your lowers. Interesting. I yeah. never thought about that. Yeah. Also, can somebody please make a hard-sided case that holds a shotgun with a 12-round tube on it so you don't have to take that tube off? <laughs> <laughs> well, how long – I mean, the – the is there a max of length? No, no, there can't be because, like, skis – people travel with skis yeah. all the time. Yeah. I've actually really thought about – well, it has to be in a hard-sided case so you can't use a ski bag, but I was like, right. there's got to be, like, a hard-sided there ski bag. There are hard, hard-sided ski and yeah. snowboard yeah, uh, thingies Maybe and golf golf clubs too. And that'd be great because it doesn't look like a gun case when you're dragging your stuff yeah. through the airport and into hotels and stuff. Yeah, and when the uh, when the airline just lets it go out on the normal baggage cart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and ma'am, pack your stuff well because nothing sucks worse than like looking outside the airplane and seeing someone take your bag of like multiple thousand dollar rifles and optics and throw it like yeah. the five feet to the. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, at least put yeah. up like a curtain or something so we don't have to watch. Exactly. That. Yeah. Let us, we don't want to watch that abuse. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, so shipping ammo um, is the uh, the first thing you do a couple of weeks out. Yep. What's the rest of the match match prep look so, like leading up to it? Um, a lot of it depends on on kind of the recon. So, if uh, I want to know what what sort of the match flavor is, and um, you know, for, for for anybody who who isn't like a Patreon and Dave show, those match recon episodes are. 99% of what you need. Hmm. Like, before that, it was Sweet. all like, I would just start calling all of my friends and be like, hey, dude, go to sh- I'm going to shoot Rocky Mountain. Yeah, YouTube, that is also a great... Like, I YouTubed all the match footage from this match that mm-hmm. I could find and so, so I could see kind of the flavor of the stages because I want to see... Uh, w- well, one is like, I got an 18-inch upper and a 14.5 pin and welded upper. So mm-hmm. I just want to know, is like, is this a Hosey base stage or is this Rocky Mountain and I'm going to be shooting five, six hundred-yard targets? Right. Um that's also going to dictate like 
how many long range rounds am I going to bring? How much long range practice am I going to put in? Like mm -hmm. this thing has six long range targets in it, so not a lot. A lot of little base stage type practice. Um, you know whether or not it has slug targets, whether or not the slug targets are really hard, whether or not I have to like shoot it at 120 <laughs> yard pistol plate like we <laughs> did here. Um, you know, like my first uh, MGM Iron Man, there was an entire stage, Iron Man stage. You had to shoot the whole stage left handed, all three guns. I'm talking like a 300 second stage. The that whole sounds thing. dumb. It kind of was, <laughs> but you had to, you had to be able to do it. Sounds and good if so you're left handed. Yeah, and so that was one of the things I had to like. Okay, how do I quad load my shotgun left handed? How do I do a rifle reload left handed? Where do I put this stuff in my belt? Like you want to have that stuff in your head ahead of time, so you're not like, you know, three shooters out moving caddies around on your belt trying to yeah. figure out how you're going to load your shotgun. Um, so just the basic kind of the type of shooting that you're going to need to be able to do when you get there. Um, and then just things like the climate. Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be cold? You know, things like that. Like, you know, making sure you have all that appropriate stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Man, you, you get way deeper in this than uh, than I do. I'm a very anal retentive guy, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I really, like, I'm, I understand that I'm sometimes just not going to shoot well. But if I show up and I bomb a match because I just didn't do some homework, it yeah. it hurts my feelings, Dave. It just yeah. Really does. Yeah, I'm kind of dealing with some of that, too. Like, uh, yeah. so um, I had a massive rifle malfunction on one stage and when i pulled my uh bolt apart after the um day uh day of shooting was done i found some stuff that could have easily been discovered if i had properly maintained or replaced springs mm -hmm. and like in my head like was as i was clearing mortaring and clearing that malfunction was uh kupika talking about how he <laughs> takes apart his entire top end and replaces every single spring in there and i was thinking like dude how would you do that? You know, it's like <laughs> shit lasts forever. forever. <laughs> Have you ever mortar cleared five rounds in a row? That's <laughs> why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like massively uh, um, mouthing over there and trying to figure it out so mm -hmm. on the uh, on the clock. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, Coop's a smart guy. It makes sense now. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I want I want to get all that stuff squared away, and uh, and but most of that is to practice weird things mm -hmm. and w one thing that i see a lot of people do is um th they'll find like one weird thing in the match and they'll get really hung up on it yeah and they'll practice that and it's like that is like one percent of this match right mm -hmm. it's like this one weird prop on a 10 stage match and they'll spend like two weeks practicing this one weird prop yeah a good example would be like a the flying pistol clay at yeah. ben benning last year exactly you saw like 30 videos of dudes practicing it's like oh yeah we get it man everybody's practicing we that. get it yeah exactly and it's like it's one thing to go out and be like okay what's this like visually um but at the end of the day like you know people ask us all the time in classes they're like well, how do I practice like shooting the zip line for MGM Iron Man? How do I practice shooting from a golf cart? Like you just get really good at shooting, yeah. And then you apply good shooting to those situations. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a good pistol shooter, you can shoot down the popper and hold where the clay is going to be and shoot the clay at the top of the arc. And you know, it's 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 just shooting. Like it's right. The, it, it's, it's not it's really any any different than no. uh, those red stitch uh, swinging steels. You know, because yeah. those have an arc. Exactly and right. So you're basically following a, a target. It's exactly much smaller. Right. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's not held in place by a piece of steel. It's using yeah uh, gravity. Well, that's the thing. it's like three gun. I say is it 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 feels like very simple shooting disguised is really complicated shooting. Really, how's like, that? Well, the, it's just. When you when you really think about it, um, t uh, take like uh, the kind of the rainbow bright stage that had all the different colored stuff mm -hmm. on it. Like, people so for people that that aren't listening, okay. it was uh, red, white, and blue mm -hmm. uh, targets, st all steel mm -hmm. targets. It was all pistol, red, white, and blue box. Shoot yep. the red targets from the red box, et cetera, yep. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but they're kind of stacked front to back, so mm -hmm. you can shoot behind some and in front of some, and you can't hit one that's the wrong color. And mm -hmm. people just got wrecked on that thing because they got so um, they got so keyed into the the perfect stage plan yeah. that they they forgot to do the shooting part when they got there. Yep. And so there's like some spots where you can kind of shoot a little fast, and there's some spots where like in my stage plan I shot the second activator back that was the white one in the middle there. Yeah, and it's partially obscured by an activator in front. Yeah. So instead of having like a an eight inch target, yeah, you got like you have like a four inch target. Yeah, exactly. And it's so like pop, 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 entirely pop. achievable. Oh, it's entirely achievable. And it's, it's just pop, 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 get to that target, pause, sight picture, trigger press, and then move on from there. And like people just forget to do the shooting part. And I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody, right? You're just like, 
I need to do this fast because that's the point of the game. And it's it's just like the clay thing. It's like it seems super complicated. It's like no, you shoot down the popper, you wait till the clay gets to the help of the arc, and you execute a good trigger press and a good side picture, and the clay breaks. Like, but somehow it just makes our brains explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you put those all yep. together, it's like. <laughs> yeah. So the gist is like, if there's some weird complicated thing that you can't practice for, just practice shooting with the gun that you're going to shoot that thing with, because mm -hmm. that that's the, you know what it really comes down to. I got you. Okay, so um, you're you're looking at the uh, the matchbook. You're looking at recon, seeing if there's anything goofy yep. that that stands out for me. You're listening to the uh, the match recon on the on you the like, Patreon you group. Like that plug? Hell yeah! Oh, yeah. And uh, it's good to hear though that that, that uh, people are actually using it for that. No, too. Dude, I I would have killed for that like three years ago. Yeah. When especially early in the sport, when I didn't know anybody, when mm -hmm. I couldn't just like call up Brian and be like, "Hey, what's such and such match like?" and he could just tell me because I didn't know anybody. So I mean, I. Dude, it, I drove to. It know. exists because there was a hole. Yeah, you know. Yeah, th exactly. It didn't. There, w there was no good way to know. Yeah. You know. And the other thing I I found out was that no one was willing to say exactly how a match was. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so. Yep. Oh yeah. It's so you get the had a great time at. It's like yeah. well I don't know how to shoot, you know, uh, Blue Ridge from your had a great time at Blue Ridge. It's like yeah. There's you know ten stages in that over three days and yeah. you showed thirty of your best seconds in there. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's exactly. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. But um, it which which is a bummer because as a as a community the potential to crowdsource information like that is definitely there. Oh yeah, for um, sure. But, well, and it's know. it's getting a lot better. I mean, you know, uh, Facebook is a lot more prevalent than it was three years ago in terms of this kind of communication, and everything else. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing as just people are like, I can't find any matches in my area. I'm like, they're everywhere, but you have to know where to look. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're like they're just not out there in the ether. Yeah. They're like th they're in the ether, but like if you don't know where in the deep dark recesses of Facebook or the internet to look, like it just seems like there's no shooting around you. you, and you it's you all over the place. Cracks me up is uh, the I can't find matches in my area guy. Mm -hmm. He's always from Austin, <laughs> Georgia, <Phoenix. laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Georgia, yeah. and he's always from like these uh like meccas these really meccas like these yeah. concentrated areas of of uh not only like three gun but practical shooting in general yeah, yeah. and just either does not want to or has not put in the the time and effort to discover mm -hmm. it. it's you know it's like uh um you know there's no good places to uh, rock climb near me yeah really like where would you find yeah. anything about rock climbing exactly. i don't know the the internet the library you yeah. know uh, outdoor or outside magazine like yeah. there there's like a thousand places and granted it's a lot smaller with uh practical shooting mm -hmm. but dude just it just start knocking down ranges in your area yeah you know call the closest range to you hey do you guys have a practical shooting program nope who might nope who might yeah that is the the follow-up question that you ask exactly who might yep. well these people over here they do a, a an idpa match call well, them up and you know i mean google's pretty good like three gun comma Utah. Yeah. And you're going to, you know, yeah, it's a you pretty know, good place to start, but somehow I, people don't do that. <laughs> exactly. I hate to, I hate to recommend uh, Google because the, uh, you know, they actively try to suppress a lot of things. Yeah. So you can't really fault a person for not being able to find something in Google that's actively suppressed. Yeah. But, um, and not in the good way. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, but there, you, there are, for sure, there are definitely ways to, uh, to do that. Okay. Yeah. So we've, Anyways. uh, We've talked about your um, you're packing up stuff. You've uh, you've shipped your ammo. We've looked at all the uh, the, the uh, film footage going in. Mm -hmm. what, what's what's it like? You know, drive here. What are you doing on the on the drive here? So, um, well, a little bit before the match, you usually get the match booklet. Um, you know, the online PDF, whatever. Uh, I will read the rule set front to back every single match I go to, uh, unless it is a UML match with a set UML rule set mm -hmm. or a three-gun nation match with a set three-gun nation rule. Or USPSA. Where, yeah, or whatever it is. If I know the rule set and I know that I know the rule set because it's the same every single time, then I'm good. But, for example, here, you can't run a D60 in TAC. Mm -hmm. So we have some TAC open shooters and some limited open shooters. Yeah. We ran a D60 on the rifle stage. Oops. So, yeah, so you, you want to know all the stuff in the rule set, you want to know uh, what the penalties are on certain types of target. Like, what is an FTN? What is a failure to engage? What's a no-shoot hit? Because sometimes that stuff can come into your stage planning. Mm -hmm. Like, how aggressive do I want to be here? Or do I want to put five birds in the air all at the same time? Yeah. Which the answer is always no. But A good um, example is uh, UML Expedition. 
yeah. expedition multi gun, mm-hmm. the penalties are a lot lower. So go fast, take chances. Yeah, like I mean, um, I mean the first ever uh, three gun nation regional series that I shot. I had just come off of shooting a whole bunch of natural train matches where the name of the game is shoot clean. If you mm-hmm. just straight up shoot a clean match, you're going to do really well. Mm-hmm. So I go to that match. I was the only person in the top 90 to shoot a clean match at the <laughs> Western Regional a couple of years ago. I'm like, I am clearly not shooting aggressive enough. <laughs> like, not by a <laughs> long shot. So that was a real big eye opener, like my first Bay Stage fast hosey match. And, you know, I just yeah. got massacred because it was like, shoot a clean match, shoot a clean match. I'm like, no, that's not the game here. So, um, but also you'll get the match booklet, uh, which is really good for, you know, round count, how much stuff to bring. Um, when I'm driving to a match, I literally bring ammo can of five, five, six, ammo can of nine mil, Same like here. just, and at least a case of shotgun and a bunch of slugs, maybe a box of buck just in case there's some weird stuff or whatever. But mm-hmm. like I bring, I have enough match for my entire squad to shoot this match or yeah. enough ammo. Um, cause you do, there's no reason to run out of ammo if you're driving to a match. Yeah. None whatsoever. Um, the only problem I've, I've run into is when I'm traveling with someone else and I don't want to nope. take up a ton of room in someone's it car. It doesn't take up that much it, space. It, I know, but I have like that mental block of like, I don't want to impose because this is his pickup truck and not mine. It's like, we're going the same place. Yeah, you know, we're going the same place. Just bring all the ammo. Yeah, no. I mean, like, you know, Eric and I travel to matches together all the time, and that poor little Tacoma is just floor to ceiling. <laughs> and, of course, he's got, like, two backpacks full of camera gear and everything else. Oh, right, right. Drone and, yeah, he just, he just goes nuts with it. But, yeah, so, like, no, I'd, you couldn't put a golf ball in there, and I wouldn't care because I'm like, if I if I need something, it's in this truck somewhere. I got a couple shooting mats, got some knee pads, I got like whatever you could possibly <laughs> need is in the back of this truck. Um, and then, but also with the match booklet, a lot of people go really crazy. They get the diagrams. Oh and yeah, I, they'll start like stage planning from diagrams. Dude, I take like just a cursory glance at the diagram and be like, uh huh, yeah, looks like a base stage, mm-hmm. and that's it. Like, all I need to know from that I'll look is, for, like, funky targets in there. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a drawing of a target I haven't seen or something. Yeah. Maybe I'll take a good hard look at that. Um, but, yeah, man, do not plan your stage frame diagram because they are never like that on the ground. And you're trying to represent, you know, best case scenario, a 20-yard by 20-yard bay on an 11 by 14 sheet of paper yep. or 8.5 by 11 or whatever. And um, it's, it's never the same on the ground. Sometimes targets aren't there. Sometimes they just... Straight up ran out of targets. Or, or uh, the ROs took forever to shoot it, so they pulled three targets. Yeah, exa- or exactly. You know, all kinds of things. You know, exactly. Someone was so timing out. So, yeah, so if you come up with a stage plan with that, then you're going to have to unplan that stage plan for me. you got to unlearn that and then mm-hmm. learn something else, which is a, a pretty hard thing to do, as mm-hmm. we all know. So, so how much, like, if you had to, like, put a, a time on it, how much time are you spending on, like, one stage that's in that matchbook? Uh, oh, like, uh, looking at the matchbook? Mm-hmm. Uh from the diagram, about five seconds. Okay. I just glance at it. I'm like, yep, base stage. You read the stage briefs and see I what do, guns I and do what read condition the and things like that? Brief. So the, that is the important page. Mm-hmm. Um, diagram, I care less if there's even a diagram. Uh, the important page is a stage brief. And I'm not re- I'm not also planning on that either, but I want to know things like there's some slugs on this stage or some whatever, and I'll make some kind of little um, – one thing that I've started doing at really big complicated matches like uh, – Hard as hell or Iron Man. Hashtag break back Iron Man. Um, <laughs> did you know that there's a uh, change.org? I bring did back Iron because Man? I signed the petition and I sent it to like 20 <laughs> friends. <laughs> yes. Everybody go to change.org. <laughs> search Dude, Iron s- Man. Sign the petition, you guys. Sign the petition to bring back Iron Man. Mm-hmm. If we get enough signatures, the president have to look has to look at it. Isn't that how change.org that's works? That's how that works, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's oh, wait, no, that's WhiteHouse.gov. That's WhiteHouse.gov. Okay, my I bad. feel like we need a WhiteHouse.gov petition. Um, so uh, on really big we're, – we're kind of skipping ahead a little bit here, but like once I get to the match and I'm walking stages, mm-hmm. um, on really big, complicated stuff, I'll start making cliff notes like – if I have a staggered, loaded magazine, what choke am I going to run in my shotgun? Do I need a sling on this stage? Um, so when I'm done shooting a stage and I'm getting ready for the next stage, I can pull out this little like three by five card out of my bag. It's like next stage cylinder choke. I need a 45 round mm. mag and a 30 round mag on the belt and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. For smaller, simpler, like UML matches, I don't do that kind of thing. Cause like cylinder choke on everything, 45 round f- mag for everything, unless there's 12 targets and it's, you know, but for like this thing here, it had, you know, one stage where there was three targets at about 200 and I want to shoot those with heavies cause they're flashers. I want to make sure they flash. And so I counted out the paper in the plate rack before that and put some heavies, you know, down in my mag. Mm-hmm. And then um, I have these big, like, 
rubbery well they're not rubbery rubber bands because rubber bands are rubbery <laughs> they're like they're like latex rubber bands they're like yeah. really durable and i have those and i wrap those around my mat so if you see my match footage and i got a big old band around there it means somewhere in that mag is some heavies oh okay. and so that's how i distinguish that from my other mags so I like you. the 45 with the bigger rubber band around it that has some heavies in it somewhere so interesting yeah I do, I do that too like i've, I've got uh several mags that are that are different some have like <clears throat> so my last name's Hartman. You can do that um, with hieroglyphics, like mm -hmm. a little heart and a little man. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've got mags that have that. I've got uh, mags that have three gun show laser etched on it, and mm -hmm. so I just choose which ones are. Yeah, the three hoser. gun shows mags have the hoser stuff, and the yep. Hartman mags have the, yeah, perfect. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the way I roll too. The the problem I come into is is uh, some of these stages. Uh, so I was in patrol and I was required to use thirty round magazines, right? So it's obviously easier to do a couple than just go swoop to yep. uh, change it in there. But I've got 60 rounds of hoser loaded or, mm -hmm. you know, 30 in one rag, one mag and, mm -hmm. you know, 28 in the in the other because I just got done with the stage. And, oh, now we're shooting long range. I don't want to use my coupled when I go yeah. prone. And so now you gotta I need a second coupler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the second coupler is key. Or a screwdriver. Yeah. Oh, quick little tip, you guys. If you have a uh, Magpul 20-round mags, you cannot put a Magpul coupler on them and put them in the gun. But you can hacksaw them in half and then do it. <laughs> Yeah. Hacksaw them in half. So if it has like the top part and the bottom part, yeah. put it sideways and cut it in half so you have only the bottom or only the top, then you can use that coupler for 20 round max. And you get two couplers. Oh, yes. bonus. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my, my buddy Ball Aaron. on a budget here. Oh, man. Yeah, my, my poor buddy Aaron uh, got a little chewed up at uh, Hard as Hell last year where you, you could only have uh, 20 rounds in a mag, mm -hmm. but you could have couplers. So instead of just downloading his 30, he coupled his 20s together. And then when he went to put them in the gun, like, <laughs> it was a run with your gun empty. And you went to put them in the gun and like they wouldn't go in there. And it was the you can only have X amount of rounds stage. It was the only stage in the entire match where somebody could not run you ammo. And, <laughs> and he beat that thing into submission until they fit. It, it, oh, you're kidding. Oh, my God. It was, it was a little bit. It was hard to watch. We sounds sounds kind of fun, actually. Yeah. Well, his rifle might not have shot all that straight on the long range stage, which was next. So it, like that little mistake. And this, so this is part of that whole like big picture match management, doing mm -hmm. your homework thing, right? Like that little mistake cost him probably like ten places in the match. I mean, he hmm. was shooting a fantastic match, and then ended up eating uh, God knows how many, you know. Uh, how much time and penalties on the long range stage was next because he just used his rifle as a sledgehammer to, you mm. know, put this thing in there and his rifle didn't shoot straight and he couldn't hit any of the long range stuff. So, okay. Then maybe that was a bad choice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like th it, it cost him a lot for sure. So that's one of those little things that you can, you know, a little bit of, you know, pre-match or even at the match just kind of like thinking about this stuff like, Oh, if I'm going to put these things together, I should make sure they fit in my gun. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, yeah, yeah that, that's a good point, too. And, you know, one of the things I, I always see is uh, people, uh, like, measuring obstacles to see if, if they can fit their gun with a, oh, the, a mag the, under the there. Oh, the angle measure? Yeah. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so they're, um, you know, like, we have to shoot through a hoop or we have to shoot under a wall or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, well, how, how tall is my gun with a 30-round yeah, yeah. mag? Yeah. You should know that. Yeah. You should know that before the match. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I see so many people uh, looking at like an obstacle and um, or a barricade and me using something like a water bottle to measure it. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's a water bottle and one half of a big pen, <laughs> you know. And so I'm going to uh, go back to the uh, hotel tonight and I'm going to put my uh, 40 round mags in there Next and to see if and they're lower pen. than a water bottle in a big pen. <laughs> that's it's fantastic. Like, you should know that beforehand yeah. and like get a get a notebook something, that's the yeah. same size, you know, or something like something. that. Yep. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny how we uh, we do stuff like bass backwards. Like, oh, oh yeah, I never thought about how how high my rifle is. Like, really, you shoot that all the time. Yeah, shoot that in practice. Shoot that in matches. And uh, and I'm I'm you know by no means saying that I'm above that because I I did it too. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where I got the water bottle and the half a big pen from. But mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's it's definitely something that um, I see a lot. So yeah. that kind of you know. Yep. Pr prior proper preparation prevents piss, piss poor performance. performance. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So when you when you get to the match, uh, like I said, I like to get there at least a half day early. Mm. Um, I am a very like be there early and take your time guy. Yeah, me too. Like I'm, my wife and I are terrible. Like we're the, you know when someone's like, hey, dude, we're having a party. We're gonna start at like six. Like we're there at six oh one, and there's nobody at the party, and we have to like 
purposely be fashionably late. We're like, we're going to be late. We're like, no, it's cool. Like, we're those people. So <laughs> it's kind of okay. Annoying. I'm not that person. Yeah, no. So I'm I'm terrible about it. But anyway, so um, so I'll, I'll show up well early, so I have plenty of time to watch stages. If there's um, absolutely anything that indicates that I might not be able to walk all the stages, then I will prioritize the stages that I'm going to shoot the next morning. Mm-hmm. Um, so usually what I'll do is I'll walk. I'm sorry. I want to interrupt you with something there. Um, I, I would uh, encourage people to walk them in the priority of where, what you're starting mm-hmm. or backwards mm-hmm. because most people will go one through eight. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's where the Charlie Foxtrot is exactly. the entire time you're walking stages. Exactly, yeah. So what I what I do if I have all the time is I will walk them in the reverse order that I'm going to shoot them. So the fir- the last stage that I walk is the same as the first stage that I shoot. So it's fresh yeah. in my head, right? And that's a good way to do it. Yeah, and so that's what I do if I have all the time in the world. If I don't have all the time in the world, I'm going to walk those stages first, and then I'm going to start from the back, and I'm going to work my way back to it. Mm-hmm. Um but I try to walk all the stages. And so the the stage walking is a place where a lot of people lose a lot of time and because they, they don't have a system. I know you knew that was coming. Um, I, I know. I, so you need, you need I want to interrupt system. again. I Go gotta ahead. Interrupt send again. it. What do you do about the reunion that happens during <sighs> walkthroughs? I'm pretty good about... Do we need to explain that one or do you think people understand what we're talking about? I mean, you can send it if you want. I think people probably understand, but I, I feel like it needs a brief interlude. Okay, so Adam, when was the last time you and I saw each other? Uh, Missouri. Pro-Am? Oh, was, yeah, it was... Generation uh, 3 Gun. Yeah, yep. it was Generation 3 Gun. Yep. September last year. Yep. So we see each other and yep. it's like, bro! Bro, you know, what's like, up? You yeah. want to catch up a little bit, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. But you multiply that times 100 people at the match. Mm-hmm. You know, after you've been shooting a bunch of matches, you start to see the same people. You're like... There's Doug Steltzer. <laughs> you know, yeah. There's, you know, there's all these people from all over the country that I haven't seen, and like they weren't at the last match I was at because that was in Texas. But this mm-hmm. is a match that's within driving distance of South Dakota, so now he's here. You know that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you you just have to prioritize, and it's it, and that's part of you know that very first show that we did. <coughs> one of the things is like you need to decide what level your participation is going to be at, right? And so like for me, it is. I want to compete at a high level. I also understand that climbing is the priority of my life, and I'm I'm not going to be you know beating Daniel Horner like ain't happening. Um, so, but the, I have that level, and at the level of participation that I want to be at, it requires good stage walks. So mm-hmm. it's like, dude, Dave, really good to see you, man. I will catch up with you. I got to make sure I get all my stages done, and like after my stages are done. I'm good to go. Right. Um, and then at the same time, like, you need to be respectful of other people, too. So I do, like, the drive-by fist bump. Yeah. Where I'll be like, hey, dude, good to see you. And, like, if they want to talk and they want to initiate that, like, assuming I'm done, I got nothing else to do, then that's cool. But I'm not going to make them feel like they need to talk to me if they're they're walking their stages. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's that's a really good interlude because, yeah, that can chew up, like, an hour. Yo, like, dude. Like, per stage. It does. I mean, I've, I've had <laughs> – yeah, <laughs> it's it's bad. So – um, but th- so when you get to the stage, that's that's where the uh, that's where the stage brief starts coming in. Um, once again, just don't even look at the picture unless you're like trying to find a target or something. But the things that I want to know for the stage brief are what guns am I using, what ammo am I using in those guns? If you have to use slugs or something, mm-hmm. um, what is the starting position of each of each of those firearms? I don't really care about my own personal start, low ready, port arms, whatever. I don't really care. Um, and then I want to count the targets that I have to shoot. And go physically find each and every single one of those targets so I know where they're at. Mm-hmm. That is the first thing that I do on every single stage, except for somehow stage six, <laughs> where there was three clays on that swinger instead of two, and I was making up a new stage plan while I was making ready, which went pretty well. I was actually kind of amazed. Um, so, like, the, the time that really, really drove that home was uh, Iron Man – or. Um, Hard as hell last year, and like three quarters of the squad were my students, and I told them all this, right? And uh, and so you know the stages there are so long, and it's I'm in a whole nother bay separate from where the end of this thing's going, so I'm kind of like walking through pantomime this kind of complicated shotgun thing, and uh, and the the, uh, the shooting area goes about 15 feet past where I'm going because I like found this spot between these two walls where I can shoot this last popper and save that 15 feet. I'm like God, I'm so smart. <laughs> and uh, and so like I do this and I get out to the end and I you know pantomime like shooting that dump in the shotgun and and uh, <laughs> my buddy who was one of the, one of my students in the class like a week before is like, where are you shooting the mini popper from? I was like, 
the what now? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, there's a mini popper behind that big popper, but I never walked around the back. I never counted the targets. Oh, yeah. I yeah. just walked to the shooting area and counted. So now I'm like, on deck, there's another target that I got to shoot. That target doesn't fit my load plan because I was shooting a zero. And so, and I have to make a big move that I wasn't planning on. So you don't want to be there because that always hurts your match performance. Like even if you kind of pull it off, it won't be as good as it would have been if you just knew where that thing was at. Mm-hmm. So that's what I do. So I find, I find um, everything that I have to shoot. Then I figure out where I have to shoot it from. So there are some positions in a stage that you have to go to, and there are some positions that are kind of optional. And sometimes those optional positions are good options, sometimes those are bad options, but mm-hmm. you figure out where you have to go with each of your guns, um, and then you figure out the path through the stage that gets you to all those places with the least amount of steps is usually the way that I kind of think about it. You know, one thing that I found, um, this is, uh, I want what was Tom Bush on? Uh, was he on six or was he on seven? Um. I don't recall. No, he was on, I, I don't know. But uh, anyway, his, yeah, yeah. his stage here, at, uh, sorry, that's an inside thing for us. Sorry, audience. <laughs> but um, so, so his <coughs> his stage, if you went all the way to the front, there was a clay hiding behind a wall. Yeah, that's six. 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 That's six, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or if you take three steps back from the draw barrel on the shotgun. Yep. You can see that same clay. And you save yourself a lot of running. And you exactly. save yourself a lot of running. So that's the and, thing. And a whole position on the shotgun. Oh, you don't yeah. have to go to that entire side. Um, so one thing that I've noticed is that there's several places you can see a single target from. So if mm-hmm. a target appears to be, like, obscured or hidden, don't don't just find that target from the shooting area and say, okay, i got to hit it from here. Yeah. Like, walk around and, and, exactly. uh, and look at well, the Well, and especially if it's something like that where it's this target all out by itself, mm-hmm. if i got to take 15 steps to get to something, I'm going to look hard to see if I can shoot it from somewhere else. Yeah. Right? Um, So, yeah, that's a perfectly good example. And uh, so you figure out your path through the stage. um, And then it always surprises people. But the last thing that I do is figure out where the reloads go. Because I'm basically like I'm shooting through with the rifle. (laughs) How many shots to take shooting through the pistol? I figure out if I have to do a reload, and then I figure out the most you know the the most advantageous place to put that Mm -hmm. reload so it doesn't cost me time. With the shotgun, the way that I plan plan the reloads is I count backwards. Yeah. So I start okay nine eight seven six five four on the clays three two load four four five six seven eight nine ten eleven nine eight and I I do it that way and I figure out where I can put those reloads. So I try not to get if I can always have it where I have, like, two rounds in the gun, that's really nice because I'm not running it all the way to zero. Mm-hmm. At the same time, ideally, I want to end with one or no rounds in the gun. I don't want to load any more rounds than I absolutely have to. Um, I want to shoot one for one on the shotgun and get all the rounds in the gun every time I'm loading the thing. That's the <laughs> ideal, right? The worst is when you're, like, unloading a handful of shells to oh, the Oh, yeah, RO. you see the guy, you're just like, yeah, there's, like, half of a box coming out of your gun, and you're just like, <laughs> Did I forget to shoot some targets? So two and a half seconds per <laughs> quad load times three quad loads in the gun. <laughs> yeah. So that was two, four, six, yeah, there's about nine seconds of absolutely worthless effort yep. in the shotgun mm-hmm. right now. Might as well just stood in the same place for Ex- nine seconds. Exactly. So, and then, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll count backwards. I'll figure out where to put those loads. And then uh, once I have it figured out where to put those loads, I take all the math out of my stage pl- program, and then I just think load four here, load eight there. Yeah. I take. I don't want to be counting while I'm shooting. No. But one thing I do put kind I of. I can't in, count why I shoot. No, it's 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 absolutely insane. I just know like after that array, I toss load a four. quad. After that array, I toss exactly. Six. And so the, well, six yeah. is a patrol thing, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And so the thing is, if uh, um, one thing I do kind of put in the back of my head is how many rounds are going to be in the gun at the lowest point in the stage. So, like, for me on stage one on the shotgun stage, at the lowest point, if everything went to plan, I was going to have two rounds in the gun, which means I have two makeup rounds oh. anywhere that doesn't require me to oh. load any more rounds. So if I miss one, I don't have to shove extra rounds in the gun at the next load. I can just keep shooting because I know I have a buffer of two, right? Mm-hmm. So I just kind of put that in the back of my head is, like, this is – good information to have if things kind of start going squirrely a little bit right i like that one a lot Mm -hmm. and obviously that works a lot better when you have like a 12 round uh tube yeah you you got a little more leeway for that to play with you know yeah yeah for patrol Uh, that's a little tougher that was yeah that was that was rough dude yeah the and (laughs) there was a there was a couple times where or no there was one time where i um was supposed to load six, but I picked up two quads, mm-hmm. and so ended up like pumping with two rounds in my hand instead of like just drop them. Just Dave. drop them on the ground. Just drop you got them, plenty dude. Of extra you stuff on the extras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, so I'll do that, and then I'll come up with, I pretty much come up with like a 99% stage plan. It's like, this is my stage plan. I'm going to drill it in, but I understand that tomorrow morning, maybe the wind blew over a bunch of targets, and maybe something mm-hmm. changed, like, or maybe something um, uh, like Bob and I were walking stages, and we walked up to our first stage, and, uh, you know, we're sh- shooting with Mark, and he's like, that clay thing, exactly the one you pointed out, mm-hmm. uh, me and Bob both didn't see that. Somehow. Oh, really? And so he goes, dude, why don't you just shoot it from there? And I'm like, and it was enough of a better stage plan that I was like, yeah, I'm, we're fixing that yeah. right now. Yeah. And so, so when you have, when you have to change your stage plan at the last minute, uh, which is a thing that at some point is going to happen, and everyone's like, do not change your stage plan under any circumstances. I will say, almost never change your stage plan, but sometimes you're gonna have to because yeah. there's like there's another target that I didn't see that has to get shot. Mm-hmm. It's got to go in the stage plan, or, or there's s- something that eliminates an entire yeah, position. Yeah, exactly. Something yeah. like that was enough of a change that I was like, all right, this is worth it. And so um, it's really like people have their stage plan and, and you have to derail your stage plan at that point. And so the, the way I think about it is like, you know, if you, if you had that commute to work, that's exactly the same every single day. And then one day you got to drive to something that's like halfway to work, but you turn mm-hmm. and you just like blow past that turn. You drive like three quarters away to work and you're just kind of on autopilot. And you're like, oh shit, I'm driving to work. And the, uh, that was like five exits ago, right? Yeah, I've done that. You need to just so many times. Yeah, Everybody's done that. Like you yeah. need to drive in that exit. So what I did for that is now when I have during the five minute walkthrough, the only part of that stage I ran for that entire five minutes was pick up the shotgun, take three steps back, popper, clay, 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 turn to the left, shoot that clay. Because it, it moved my reload. It moved mm-hmm. my movement. It, I mean, it changed a lot of stuff. And so I just drove that part until I got back onto my original stage plan just over and over and over and over hmm. and over until that was the stage plan. Mm-hmm. So. And then, so what I do, um, I'll walk my stages, and like I said, I try to end with the stages I'm shooting the next morning so they're fresh in my head. Um, I'll film them if they're complicated at all, and I usually don't go back to film, but sometimes I'm just sitting in a hotel and I can't remember what I was going to do, but I'll just walk through the stage and I'll mm-hmm. hold it up first person style, shoot those plates, and you know. I'll tell you one thing that really helps for me, especially on um, uh, open terrain, which I'm mm-hmm. not really good at because this match here in Colorado is is kind of the flavor of what we normally shoot, right? Yeah, yeah. Is fast base, base stuff because we don't have, like, a lot of open places. Mm-hmm. Um, on open terrain, I'll, I'll make diagrams and I'll write down, like, every target. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll draw poppers. I'll draw mm-hmm. toasters and, and kickers and shit. And uh, Are you a good artist or are these no. like straight stick figures? No, they're straight stick figures. Uh, I mean, yeah. my <laughs> – I might have to cut this out, but my poppers kind of look like dicks a little bit. <laughs> And uh, I'm not trying to. It's just like, <laughs> oh, that one didn't come out right. <laughs> I swear I've seen a popper before. <laughs> but, I, yeah, they're they're bad. Where, I mean, my my uh, if we've got, like, uh, um, you know, 4 by 10 knockdown targets, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, they, they end up looking like squares. They're not great. Yeah. But it's a good representation of for the sure, th- for things sure. that I have to well, shoot. Well, it's, it's the stage diagram as Dave sees it. As Dave sees right? it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And then uh, as Dave could never, ever show that to anyone else because they mm-hmm. wouldn't understand it. Yeah. But anyhow, so – um, I don't look back at those very much mm-hmm. unless there's uh, um, distance calls that I need to know mm-hmm. for holds and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but the act of writing it down helps me memorize it. Oh, totally. So I guess that's uh, kinesthetic learner, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that that helps me solidify it in my head of, of writing it down. Mm-hmm. The So it's it's like you were talking about with the video of like the video helps if you need to go back to it, but if you don't use it, then you still did it and it's you still, still the yeah, act of doing it. still did it. It's still the act of doing it. And a lot of people talk to their phones, so then now you're explaining your stage plan. Yeah. And so that also solidifies it in yeah. your head. Yeah, for sure. And so the, the way that – so the, the stage planning, you know, and we're kind of jumping back and forth a little bit, but um, – the visualization is a really unique thing. Everybody kind of does it a little bit different, but it's it's you know if you've ever watched, uh, I watched a really interesting documentary on um, uh, airplane acrobatic um, like air show stuff. Oh yeah, and people do the same thing like the way we air gun stuff. Mm-hmm. Climbers stand at the base of a cliff and mm-hmm. we kind of like air climb. Uh, if you ever seen like Lindsay Vaughn in the Start Gate with her eyes closed going back and forth, yep. she's visualizing the stage. And air people s- stand next to their plane and they stand up and they hold up their hands and they turn around like that. Like, oh, you're kidding? No, yeah, totally a thing. I saw it and I was like, oh yeah, that's brilliant. Well, because it's, it's such a weird three dimensional thing that they yeah. have to like physically kind of turn around to like 
figure out you know where they're going to be at. So yeah. It's so when when you bring up uh, rock climbing, like mm-hmm. that's that's a real thing. Like I, I go to the uh, Real Rock Festival every year. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. Even if you're not into rock climbing, it's that's fantastic. They're fan did, did, fantastic. Did you see um, Stumped? No. Which one was that? Oh my god. It, you can buy it online. Just oh, Google, okay. Google uh, Stumped and Safety Third. Stumped is about this uh, girl with one arm trying to climb 512. Oh. And it is the funniest video I've ever seen in my life. I, have, I saw the preview for that. I haven't seen it It's yet. amazing. Okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it it's available online. You can download it for like five bucks or something. By the way, there's a shooter here, a local guy, that's done a lot of filming for Real Rock. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll have to introduce you to him. Oh, cool. Right but on. Anyhow, yeah. well, sorry, sorry yeah, yeah. side note there. but um, Sorry, audience. <laughs> when, no, no, this is part of it. Um, watching Real Rock mm-hmm. is is uh how i came up because i don't know a lot of rock climbers i've done some like top roping and stuff but i don't mm-hmm. know a lot of rock climbers and i guess i got called a gumby i think that's a bad thing um <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow so Kay. uh watching that um i want to say it was like chris uh sharma is that right yep i want to say it was him that um was doing the the pantomime of the holds oh yeah with his hands and yeah I mean, it, it looks like he's doing Tai Chi if, if he wasn't, oh, yeah, for if sure. he didn't have a context. Well, like but really it's hard exactly sport. what we're doing. It's exactly what we're doing. Like really hard sport climbing where you're projecting something mm-hmm. is exactly like three gun. Like the, the parallels are right there. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, across the board. So a lot of the same stuff goes into it. But so the, the way that I'll do it, I'll walk the stage a few times because I'm looking for stage markers, visual in, you know indicators. Um, things like that, how I want to, how I want this to look for me visually, mm-hmm. and then <coughs> when I start programming the stage, I, I'll, I'll close my eyes and I'll kind of tune out, and you know if it's in the hotel room or wherever, like I'll just kind of go sit by myself, and what I want to see is the entire stage in the first person, not like video of Adam running around yeah. the stage. I want to see the stage through my eyes. I want to see the sight picture that I'm going to use on all the targets. So on the close hosey stuff. I'm seeing just red in front of the brown and pop pop, and I'm visualizing shooting fast splits. And on the little, you know, the the red, white, and blue stage, I'm visualizing, you know, fast kind of soft sight pictures across most of that stuff. And I'm visualizing a good equal height, equal light, real deal sight picture, and a good straight to the rear trigger press on that activator that's between the other two because I don't want to eat that five seconds. Like all those little minute changes. I'm look, I'm seeing my port when I'm quad loading. Um, one of the things I do is, uh, I'll, I'll write down my holds for the long range stuff. And then I'll think about what that hold looks like in my reticle. And I'll visualize that portion of my reticle on the target and, you know, go from there. So I, I want as much of a real world visual representation of it as I can get. Mm -hmm. And I try to have (laughs) it happen as close to real time as I can. Like, I'm not going to go like, Oh, I'm going to shoot the plate rack. Tink, 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 tink. Like, with the rifle at 50 yards. Like, I don't shoot 50-yard rifle play racks like that. Right. I go pop, 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 pop. And right. I'm, I'm visualizing a perfect run, but I'm visualizing a realistic, this is how Adam's going to shoot at perfect run. I'm not visualizing the Daniel Horner run, right? So that's really – because you hmm. want it to be as close to the real experience that you're going to have as possible. And if you can do it enough times well enough – you can actually trick your brain into thinking that you've already done it. Mm-hmm. Like, think about if you have a drill, like you're shooting some build drills or, or you know, some l presses or whatever the heck. Your 10th run is always better than your first run. Well, if you can trick yourself into thinking that you're on your 10th run, yep. then that 10th run or that first run is going to be as good as that 10th run. So, so what I strive for um, is five perfect, no, mess, no messing up at all, start to finish, visualizations of Adam's perfect run at the speed that Adam's going to shoot it at. That's what I strive for. I feel like if I can get from five front to back with no messing up in it at Hmm. all, then that is locked in there. This is the night before this is after this, this is, yeah. So this is the night before back in the hotel room. Um, and then I do the same five before I shoot the stage. Like when I'm on deck, I'm just standing there looking like I'm the ROs are always like, Oh man, thanks for having your guns ready. And I'm like, I've been standing here with my guns for like 15 minutes because I'm just staring at the ground with my eyes closed, running through the stage plan over and over yep. and over and over and over. And that's the only thing in my brain. Um, so night before, drive back to the hotel, get back there. Um, the first thing that I'll do when I get back to the hotel is I'll get all my mags and everything loaded up. I want to show up at the range with loaded mags. Everything's ready. I that us- is huge. I usually have enough rifle mags that I can load individual rifle mags for all the stages I'm going to do. So the only thing I'm actually reloading uh, 
it between stages is my pistol mags. Mm -hmm. I really like to try to do that if I can. Um, cause I, you know, I don't want to blue Falcon my friends and not be resetting, but like right. at some point you got to reload your stuff. So right. that's what I try to do. Um, yeah, the, the rifle, um, mag thing, that's kind of difficult because, you know, we, we have so many unique mags mm -hmm. for, uh, different situations mm -hmm. like, and, and, you know, save for this match here. Like I'll use the D 60 all the time because I can. Yeah. Yep, and that's fine. Like, if that's your system, cool. But just know, like, show up with that thing loaded, and yeah. then know that that's going to be part of your post stage thing is to reload that. But mm -hmm. so I'll go home, I'll load that stuff up. Um, you know, part of that like day before thing is figuring out how long does it take to get from my Airbnb to the range. Oh yeah. Um, is there breakfast on the way? Like all of that morning stuff. Like I want to be on the range, like pulling in gearing up ready to go at least a half hour before i have to be there because shit happens yeah right yeah. i mean i i was here early, um early enough this morning that i fell asleep on one of the rifle tables on stage two because <laughs> there was like nobody around and i was like well i got my stage walking done and i'm just gonna so so what i'll do up <laughs> is is i'll show up in the morning um go back to the night before uh so i get all my mags loaded up i get all my stuff situated i know like this you know these are going in the cart these are staying here if I need knee pads for I got to, you know, go to a double kneeling position in some gravel or something the next day, I'll make sure those are in my range bag. I kind of go through all these stages. I'm like, what is all the gear I need for all these stages? Make sure all, all that's in my range bag. And I usually take anything that I don't need and just take it out so I don't have, mm -hmm. like, a million things in my cart and it's not just a mess. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take whatever stage I'm starting on. I'll make sure that the choke that I need for that stage is already in my shotgun. Like, if I need to sling on my rifle, I'll just put it on my rifle. I'll check, make sure my dot's still working, like, all of that. Oh, huh, okay. So I, I just do a pre-check. You know, it doesn't really take that long. I'm talking like 15, 20 minutes putting your stuff together. It can yeah. save you a bunch of hassle in the morning. Yeah, and it's, uh, <coughs> it's 15, 20 minutes low pressure the mm -hmm. night before. But yeah. If you're, if you're rushing to stuff a mag. Oh, while, if they're like, Adam, they're you're on deck and you're putting bullets in a mag. That that stage just like take twenty percent out of whatever your stage yeah. finish is going to be. Just That's unnecessary pressure put exactly. on you. Yeah, exactly. That you that you could have solved. Yeah, exactly. So I want I want to be as prevented. prepared as I can. Prevented. Yeah, prevented. Yeah, preventative maintenance. Exactly what it is. Um, so then the morning of you you know get up nice and early, try to get some sleep. I'm kind of insomniac, so I don't really sleep very well anyways. But you know. I try not to really party and get all crazy. And this goes back to that, like, how serious do you take it? If, you know, it's mm -hmm. a social thing, like, whatever, shooting with the hangover. If, if you don't care how you do, fine. There's, like, this whole thing doesn't apply to you if you don't care. Right. You're like, probably not listening to the show. You're probably, yeah, you're probably not listening <laughs> to the show. And if you listen to this one, you've already turned it off a long time ago. So we're not talking to those Don't guys, ever say like, that on the podcast. Oh, come on, man. Oh, come on. All right. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. Um. No, I'm saying, like, if you're one of those guys that doesn't care how they do, they did not make it to minute whatever we're oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, listening okay. about match I got you. No, it's a great show. A Sorry, great show, I, I thought you were talking about the uh, the people that do care. No, My no, mistake. No. no, the people who do care, I, I feel like I can get something from this, hopefully. Absolutely. Um, so, anyway, so then I get to the range nice and early. I get all my stuff on. I get my sunscreen on because if I don't put it on first thing in the morning, I freaking forget, and that sucks. Um, I, I did that today. I get all my, you know, get my eye pro, get my ears. I got this, I got these really, really nice set of, uh, electronic ears from house of hearing. I'm paranoid about leaving my pants running through the washing machine. So as you can imagine, I have a system. I take my wedding ring off. I put it in the box with my ears, take my ears out and put them in my pocket. So if I don't have my wedding ring on, my ears are not in the ear container. Oh, weird. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally weird like that. So, cause I've, I've, I had some other ears <laughs> that I've run through the washing machine like a half dozen times, but like, oh, like yeah. electronic ones will not my stand phone, that. My so. phone, I, I swear to God, like I can't find, like, oh, I've got one ear. Yeah. I've got one foamy. Yep. Where the hell is <laughs> Where the, the other one? Exactly. So I throw that foamy away and then, and then I'll then wash my the shorts. <laughs> like, damn it. Here yeah. it is. Or my dog poops it out or something exactly. like that. <laughs> Dude, you run through a lot of foamies. <laughs> you run through a lot of foamies, huh? Yeah. I've got like the uh, awesome. the, the, big the bulk machine pack. shop bulk pack. Yeah, like $50 worth of foam ear pro. <laughs> I absolutely do. I've got it in the back of my truck. It works nice, though, when, uh, yeah. you know, stuff like this where you get uh, spectators. Yeah. And you, you just, can just hand out some You foamies. can see someone that you look out of place. Are you new here? Yeah. Yes, I am. Dude, you should Would see you the like guys. Here you, you should go. see the guys that walked down from the skeet shooting to see what was going on. And, um, uh, uh, they saw a uh, open shooter shooting a uh, uh, open box fed shotgun, uh -huh. like making ready, and they're like, 
Oh my god, look at that giant leg. I thought their heads were getting split. It's fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was oh, really good. You can only load two rounds when you shoot trap though. <laughs> oh yeah. No, they were just like, <laughs> Jesus, how many rounds was that mag? I was like, I don't know, I think Mark said it has like twenty one or something. He's like, Oh my it was awesome. Um <laughs> so anyway, show up, get all my stuff ready. Um I'll usually just drag my my uh cart full of stuff to the first stage. I used to be all manly and carry my stuff and now I'm all beat up from all alpine climbing and and uh don't do that anymore, so I got a cart. And uh, so I, I drag my cart to the stage I'm going to shoot first, and then I walk to the stage that I'm going to shoot last that day, and I rewalk those stages in reverse order just to, like, get that fresh okay. back in my head again, finishing up once again on the stage where I'm going to shoot. And then I'm there. I'm ready to go. What if you're shooting a uh, PM and there's people on the stage? Do you just sit there and observe? Yeah, then I'll just observe. Okay. Yep. And usually when there's an AM, PM, there's a lunch break. Um, but right. I, w I'll, I won't generally walk all four during the lunch break. I'll walk maybe like the first two or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I'll just observe. In, and a lot of it's just kind of like being on the range, getting used to being, you know, hot and dusty or humid or whatever your environment is like. Um, just kind of like getting your body used to that. Because if you just get yeah. out of the car from a nice air conditioned thing and all of a sudden it's 115 mm -hmm. degrees, like it's kind of hard to just adjust. So Yeah. There's something to be said for, for, uh, for getting your conditions down. I remember the first time I went to uh, – uh, Rock Castle to shoot. I stepped out of you know my air conditioned truck and mm -hmm. like immediately started sweating. I was like, oh god, this is not right. Oh, dude, I got <laughs> dude. That place about killed me. I yeah, can't. Well, I can't we, do we this anything. Yeah, we come from air. Pretty dry. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's uh, when you have to chew the air a little <laughs> bit. Like I'm, I'm out. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, exactly. That's not my thing. Yeah. But yeah, so I'll do I'll do that and then I'll get to that stage and then you know business as usual, right? They'll um, they'll come up, they'll read off the stage brief, and for God's sakes, pay attention when they read the stage brief because mm -hmm. bare minimum, it's just straight up rude not to, and maybe something changed. Yeah. Like, maybe a target blew over, maybe something. Oh, yeah. Maybe a bunch of people have been getting DQs for some 180 call that you weren't, you know, that you didn't think about. Mm -hmm. Um you know, like pay attention to that. Like if you, if you ever see me listen to stage brief, I'm usually staring at the ground and all of my attention is focused on what the RO right. is saying. Like I want to hear every single word of that. One thing I'll, I'll also add, I mean, cause there's people that go around like air gunning when the stage brief is happening and mm -hmm. they're the, usually the ones that are like, well, what, what was that part? Wait, wait, I didn't but hear that. Well, yeah, you're standing here. If you're at a stage during a stage brief and mm -hmm. you're not shooting, shut up. Yeah. Like keep keep your mouth shut. Like oh, yeah. let that happen. That is those people's time yep. to hear everything that they need to be. You know, oh, yeah. like don't be talking to someone else. Don't be <coughs> talking to anyone because mm -hmm. even if you're talking quiet, a lot of people have electronic ears and that can it picks it up. Yeah, yeah that exactly. picks it up and it can uh, distort it and you, they won't be able to hear what the RO says. So yeah. be polite to your your fellow shooters. For sure, for sure. And then another thing with the stage brief, um, sometimes on the long range they'll give you distances. Uh, I run by with the uh, trust but verify, so I will laze <laughs> everything. And this is the day before. Like when I walk the long range stages the day before, mm -hmm. I laze all the stuff um, to make sure I have those distances down because sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, this one's about 230 and this one's about 340. Yeah. And then you're like, uh. After my first uh, hard as hell, I, I don't do trust at all. No. It's only verify. Oh, yeah, only verify. Uh -huh. Yep. Because that 620-yard <laughs> target. Was not. No, it's 640 <laughs> yards. It was. Yeah. And, and those 20 yards is a 20 big difference. 20 yards is a big difference <laughs> at 600 <laughs> yards with the 223. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, so I listen to that. Uh, Five-minute walkthrough. What I'm doing then depends where I'm at in the shooting order. Obviously, if you're down in the shooting order, you're resetting and everything. A little pro tip for everybody. Nobody really cares how good you do, but they care if you reset. Yeah. Okay. Reset. Yep. Hard. Like, that's your job. Reset hard until it's not. And then focus on the shooting, mm -hmm. and then go back to the resetting. Um, you can also have fun while resetting. Oh yeah, yeah. I it's mean that, that's your time to like. Oh yeah, joke like around and joke around, and, like chase people down to the target and jump in front of somebody and tape the hole they were going to tape mm -hmm. and like, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean that's like it's you know some people act like it's really a chore, but it's just part of the thing. Which is yeah, just go have fun. Um, but yeah, like you know, take that part seriously. Like, the, and if like, you if you found a sneaky way to get out of resetting. You oh, did not. No. Everyone knows you're not everyone resetting. Everyone knows you're not resetting. And everyone hates you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, the whole, like, walk to the edge and tape the first target and slowly saunter off. Yeah, while everyone yeah. That. Like, no, that doesn't cut it. Yep. That doesn't Go cut it. Go stand behind the side-by-side side so exactly. no one can see you. Exactly. We see you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. So, yeah. So, that's important. Um, yeah. Reset like you mean it. And uh, and just, you know, it's it's just 
a good thing to do for these ROs that are volunteering time, standing out here all day long. Like, if your ROs have to tell you to reset, like, you are officially messing up bad. Yeah, you're and a bad person. Yeah, so, like, just you screwed up. stay in front of that stuff, right? So, but also resetting allows you to walk around and see things like, I'll pay attention to where holes are. If mm-hmm. like, so you, usually the way it works out is people kind of end up resetting like the same little, you know, chunks each time. Cause that's just sort of the way it kind of happens. It's like human nature. Yeah. It's just human nature. Like, Oh, I'll get these things. You guys get those. That guy gets the star, like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're like taping and it's, it's not like I'm like walking around trying to look for the sneaky stuff while I'm resetting. But if I'm taping and I notice on this target, these shots are always just hugging the no shoot or some weird little thing like that. I might just kind of put that information in the back of my head when I'm kind of thinking about my stage plan. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, then comes the time. Usually when I'm in the hole is about the time I'll, um, uh, put mags and everything on. I strip everything off of my belt during three gun matches. Cause it's so much weight to pack around. Yep. I will strip the, I'll, <laughs> I'll even take the caddies off. Like I'll strip yeah. it all the way down to nothing. Um, if I'm going to have some time between stages, I'll take the pistol off. Like I want as little stuff on my belt as possible. So when I'm in the hole is when I'm putting that stuff back on. And then when I'm on deck and that shooter's shooting, that's when I'm standing there, eyes closed, running that stage plan over and over and over and over and over. And I'm just waiting for that buzzer to go off. Um, So then you shoot your stage. You're in the middle of your stage and things go completely (laughs) pear-shaped. I know this is, this seems super foreign and there's no way that this would ever happen in an actual (laughs) three gun match, but sometimes things don't go as planned. Right. And when things don't go as planned, um, a lot of people that there's, there's kind of, there's, there's a few different, you know, thought processes. There's the, I need to make it up thought process. Yeah. There's the, I'm totally screwed and I'm just going to go crazy thought process. Um, but what I try to do and what I would recommend to most people is to try to get back to the plan. Like like I said, it's that commute to work, right? Like if you're commuting to work and you accidentally took some exit, you're going to just like drive down the on off ramp, up the on ramp, and right back onto the freeway, right? Like that's what you want to do. You want that yeah. deviation to be as little as possible. And so like let's say I'm a, I come into a position and I'm going to shoot a plate rack and I just have a, a horrendous time at this plate rack and I run the gun dry and I do a reload and I shoot one plate off of it. If my stage plan said do a reload when I exit, I'm going to do a reload and I'm going to drop a mag that has 22 rounds in it and I'm going to put a new mag in the gun because that's what my stage plan said and I don't want to be thinking, well, how many shots were in that next position? Do yeah. I really need all? No, no just that's put, a good point. Just put that in there. Like you don't want to be doing. It's back to like doing math. Like don't do math while you're shooting. Yeah. Just get back on your stage plan and shoot that thing. Um, and that that is, I think that is the. Sp- the spot where like kind of that mid range shooter really struggles where it's like when things start going wrong and like for those guys, like that happens at every level. I had a complete come apart on stage eight here or in stage one, I guess it was, and just like threw it away. Right. But there's a level to which I could still, you know, maintain and keep it together because I could just get back my plan, right? Like I had a few misses on a clay. Well, when I do that next reload, I'm going to put four more shells in the gun to get back to the 12 shells that I was going to have in the gun that was planned and get back on that stage plan, mm-hmm. right? So um, so then when I'm done shooting, uh, you know, unload show clear, holster up. Uh, if, you know, they got to look at anything, walk around. Don't be that jerk that's, like, fighting for perfect doubles and all that stuff. Just accept <laughs> that, like, yeah, I shot it once and you, I missed the other one. You, and pulled, like, the, you the pulled the second shot. You know you did. Everybody knows you did. Just eat your penalty. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. And um, look at the tablet and hit the approve button. If yeah. they don't offer it to you, ask to see it. Yeah. I, I got fat fingered five places at MGM once because somebody put a nine instead of a one. Dude, th- yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and here here's a problem I have. So <clears throat> if I have, like, a hard time on a stage, yep. I'm like a – Oh, you just – whatever. It, Hit the button. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you need to go yeah. see the uh, the FTN. You need to go yep. make well, sure and that maybe you're like, getting the proper yeah, five-second so, penalty well, and also instead like, of a FTE or something. Exactly. That's the thing. It's like it can get a lot worse. Like, yeah. did they know that you even shot at it? Yeah. Like, no, well, I, I shot at that thing. These like, are honest mistakes, too. You oh, know? yeah. It's and not it's like the so, – yeah, exactly. No, there's nothing yeah. um, you know, punitive about it or, or uh, uh, nefarious, but it's – 
yeah. just points out, like, you got to no. pay attention. No, well, I mean, I, I remember uh, Cedar Valley a couple of years ago. I walk up and I look at the tablet, and there's a 60-second failure to spin penalty on a stage that didn't have a spinner. <laughs> I'm like, I don't feel like I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and also, look at the name on the top and make sure that name is your name. Oh, I never thought I've, of that. I've totally gotten my score attached to somebody else's name and gotten our names backwards. And oh, like, weird. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes it can be great. I'm like, Daniel <laughs> Jurassic. Yep. That's <laughs> <laughs> sure. You bet. I'll take it. Um, but, yeah, make sure that name is your name. Um, so, th- like you said, the stage that you wreck, uh, this is where we get into the five-minute rule. You've been a TPC, so you know what the yeah, five-minute rule Yeah, by the is. way, if you observe – this goes both ways. This if goes you both ways. someone yes. wrecking a stage – Leave give them, them a five minute rule. Give them five minutes. Yeah. Exactly. And so, yeah. So basically the five minute rule for those who don't know it is you have five minutes to, uh, with restraint, kind of throw a little fit in your head. Don't go back and throw stuff around and cuss and everything else. But like, and stand if you in the can corner. do it away from the squad, yeah. that is the time to do it. Exactly. Like, go back to your truck, go back to the rental vehicle. Maybe, uh, exactly. You know, little under the breath cussing yeah. or something like that. You know, you, you want to keep it to that. You don't want to have a full on come apart in front of everybody. Like n- yeah. that, that will single you out way worse than even being the guy who doesn't reset. <laughs> like that guy doesn't reset and, and he said <laughs> an F-bomb in front of that junior <laughs> shooter. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so like, you know, t- t- you know, whatever you need. And the, and the same thing applies to if you do it really, really well, right? If you just burn down that stage, mm-hmm. take five minutes, feel good about yourself and then get your head back in it. Because you don't want to go into that next dude. like, oh, I'm the best shooter ever, and just go totally crazy, right. and you know, end up uh, but, eating but a bunch of penalties. But you do need that five minutes to um, get back uh, to normal, to appreciate, yeah, your performance that you just did, and mm-hmm. burn that into your head. Like, this is me. This is exactly. This is the the performance that I'm capable of. Yep. You know, good job. Let's go do it again. Exactly. Exactly. So that that five minutes is a really important check of time. Um, if it goes bad enough, that five minutes will be me I'll just like, hey, guys, like, I'm going to be over there for a minute. Yeah. And it might be just kind of like standing in the corner, mumbling under my breath a little bit, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, but most of the time, I'm just like, ah, man, I can't believe I shot a freaking no shoot. And I'll, and I'll go back yeah. and I'll start stuffing Max. So uh, the, how, what I do immediately after I get done shooting depends on the schedule. So if it is an on-off schedule, then um, I won't stuff Max right after right, I shoot because you have that big break. But if it is like this where it's an AMPM schedule and I'm going to go straight from one stage to the next stage, as soon as I'm done shooting, I'm going to go back and start shuff- stuffing mags um, for, you know, uh, uh, like like I said, I try to have the rifle stuff all loaded up so most of the time I'm just stuffing the pistol stuff. Um, if I need to change choke in my shotgun for the next stage, if uh, my dot went out and I need to change a battery, like any kind of preventative stuff, I take care of that immediately because mm-hmm. I don't want to be going to the next stage, trying to listen to the stage brief, trying to do the walkthrough, trying to fix my guns, trying to stuff mags all at the same time. I want to take care of that immediately. At the same time, your job is still to help reset. So if I'm sitting there stuffing mags and I hear, if you are finished, I'm putting that mag down and I'm grabbing a roll of tape and I'm going out there and I'll come back and I'll stuff mags during the, you know, between the next shooter. Because you still have a whole squad worth of people, but the point is to get that stuff mm-hmm. done and out of the way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so what what are you doing? So you're you're a, um, an athlete. Like your primary focus is rock climbing, mountain biking, et cetera. Those mm-hmm. are athletic endeavors. Mm-hmm. So is three gun. Mm-hmm. It requires... Uh, being out in the elements all day mm-hmm. requires um, hydration management, nutrition, et cetera. Mm-hmm. What are you doing as far as like hydration and n- nutrition during a, a three gun match? Um, so I, I try to bring a cooler with me if at all possible. Like the drive two matches, I have a cooler with ice and I have a grip of liquids in there. I got enough for me and at least one other person on my squad. And I try to drink as much as I possibly can. I always have something in my hand sitting out by the cart drinking whatever. Mm-hmm. And for me personally, the w- just the way my body works, uh, my body works really good with just like constant snacking. So like here I had some beef jerky. I had some almonds, which are awesome because they got a whole ton of calories. Um, I had some kind of granola bar type things. I had some little brownie bar type things. I had a bag of uh, peanut M&M's. Um, just like some salty stuff, some high protein stuff, some high calorie stuff. But for me personally, it's just kind of constant snacking. I, I never, ever want to feel hungry. I never want to feel thirsty. I just want to kind of, you know, keep everything nice and yeah. me. And if you have a <coughs> full day on the range, for God's sakes, at some point, stop and put on some more sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, you will, that, that you is will for sure. regret that. That is for sure. And I bought a 
giant like three quarters of a sombrero straw hat that I took to this match. <laughs> this thing and is amazing. It is the best thing ever. <laughs> it's so good. It doesn't do super good, and um, I finally forgot to take it off during a make ready. <laughs> and uh, and had to like fling it off, but yeah, yeah I'm a baseball cap cap guy, but I'm watching y'all roll around in your uh, big straw caps, and I think I'm gonna have yeah. to change that. I've been because I've been just I've flipping got the to the most cap. burnt. Neck. So that's been part of one of my um my uh, a new change in my uh, getting my gear ready. When mm-hmm. I put my mags on, I take off the sombrero and I put on the ball cap because <laughs> I I hate shooting without a cap on because mm-hmm. I just, sun's in your eyes and yeah. brass and everything else. Oh, dude, Mark Zebert got a brass round down the back of his uh, shirt. Oh, nice on the tower. Oh, it was, but that felt amazing. Yeah, he had to stop mid clock mid shooting oh, really? and rip it out. Oh yeah, he ate five seconds digging that oh, thing out for sure. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. should have left that one. Yep. So. so. Uh, Okay, we talked about um, nutrition and uh, and hydration. If you f- if you find yourself hungry mm-hmm. or you find yourself thirsty, what should you do? I mean, obviously the obvious thing is have water or eat. But yeah. it, are you hosed at that point? Are you screwed? Or no, can no, no. You well, I mean, bring that back. Y- you're never screwed. It's just like when your you know stage is going to hell. Like you got to keep shooting. So right. it's like, well, I still got to keep shooting. So I got to keep eating. I got to keep drinking. Um, but I mean, I'm like. It was pretty darn hot out here. I'm yeah. trying to put down, like, a whole Gatorade per stage. Like, I want to put oh, down okay. a liter yep. of water per stage. Like, if I get off this range without drinking a gallon, then I'm probably behind the curve. Yeah. And I probably was even with that. So. I was pretty bad at this match. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest. Yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, um, so the, the, the water, the water piece, it was just mm-hmm. like, I felt like. I never had time to go to the cooler and grab something, but you mm-hmm. always do, you know? Well, I, I sit on my cooler. Like, I'll take the cooler out, and I'll pull it up to wherever kind mm-hmm. of the staging area is for mm-hmm. making ready, and I'll sit on that, and I'll pull the thing out, and I'll drink, and I got the tape sitting next to me on nice. the thing, and yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say the matches that do provide uh, um, water or mm-hmm. what other drinks for uh, for our shooters, I drink way more than if I have to provide it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's mm-hmm. that. I ran into a uh, – so yesterday we, we uh, shot PM. Today I shot AM. So yesterday, PM, you know, had lunch before – or had a um, little bit of a breakfast, had lunch before we started shooting. And then uh, last stage of the day, it's like, okay, well, I'm a little bit hungry. I'm out of food. But uh, I'll, just, I'll just push through. Yeah. I'm second on the stage. No big deal. Yeah. Well, and then we had like a 40-minute pause while we yep. uh, discussed rule sets and uh, equity. But um, – mm-hmm. That we'll get into another time. I'm just going to say, I'm very curious now, <laughs> but I feel like we might not want to tangent into this because it might get kind of complicated. Yeah, yeah, that that's a whole show in, in and of itself. But All anyway, right. we had a 40-minute pause, and so by that time, like when I'm making ready, it's like my stomach's like making yeah, noise hurting. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that was a little tough. And then, But, yeah. you know, luckily I didn't have a gun that worked anyway, so it didn't matter. But Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good, yeah. Feel terrible and <laughs> <laughs> have to mortar clear your rifle like five times in a row. Exactly. Sweet. And, uh, but it worked. So, so yeah, the, uh, that piece. All right. So, um, moving on with, with, uh, match manager, like what other things are you doing throughout the day that, um, that help you maintain your, um, your preparedness, both physically Mm -hmm. and like material wise with, uh, with, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like I I get done (coughs) shooting, I get everything ready for the next stage, like whatever adjustments I need to make to the guns, Mm -hmm. um, you know, making sure all the mags and stuff are full. I have a uh, I have a spot in my bags where loaded mags go, and everywhere else is suspect. Like, yeah, I never Same ever here, pull dude. like, oh here here's a mag right here. Yep. Like no, I got like the spot in my rifle bag where the rifle mags go, and then the little pistol pouch things, and I th- that I has load them all up and I me. stuff them back in that, that place. That has completely stopped me from um, messing up and grabbing a partial mag. Oh yeah, know? yeah. And Don't want to do that. Yeah, so. That's that's a good thing. So a lot of these shooting bags have like you know little mag mm-hmm. holders or whatever, and then they have these giant pouches. Yep. Giant pouches is the need to need to load. Yes. For yes. Me. Exactly. And the uh, the individual ones where the pistol goes or mm-hmm. where the uh, the rifle goes, those are the uh, cool. Yeah. Good to use. That's exactly what I do. I mean, my, mine are in different bags. Like I have my range bag, and oh, then I have like my gun bag, and the gun bag has loaded mags in it, and the range bag, anything in the range bag is considered suspect. Nice. Yep. So. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yep. Separation of church to state, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good way to do it. All right. So how yep. about um, how about mental management when you're? So that that's a really tough one, and that's that I think is a very personal thing, and it's something mm-hmm. that I like personally am really struggling with right now. Um, but right, like the kind of the happy medium that I found is there's, there is, 
there's a lot of gray area between I take this super, super seriously and this match is all encompassing and I'm just here to have fun and I don't care about my score. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a huge gray area between those two. And, uh, and as you get better and as you get put more time into the sport, you know, people are like, Oh, well I'm going to get better and I won't be nervous at the first stage. I'm like, no, that gets worse. Yeah. Like, significant. Like the more mm -hmm. you put into the sport, the more you expect out of yourself. And then, um, you know, like I've, I've had a lot of trouble with that recently. Like, um, I had the craziest thing ever happened, which, you know, like when you start off shooting, everyone's like, Oh, no one's watching you shoot. Like, don't worry about it. And which is the truth. But I went to nationals and I had several people in my squad who were former students Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm supposed to know what I'm doing, right? Like, yeah. I teach this stuff. I'm sponsored by companies. Like, I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. And I'm making ready on the first stage of the first day. And I heard someone go, oh, shoot, Adam's up. Quiet. And I heard the punk of all these phones coming on. <laughs> and it was the first time <laughs> ever when I was like, these guys really expect to see something. <laughs> and it wrecked me. It at, Like, I finished 15 places worse than any finish ever since i started shooting three gun at nationals Holy cow. like it absolutely destroyed me that pressure just mm -hmm. and so i've the i had a pretty good break until cedar valley and then at cedar valley i'm like you know i'm trying to kind of find that happy medium and so then i went too far on the other side where it's like oh, i'm just here to have fun it's just a good time and i had my first uh failure to engage literally ever where I just straight up forgot to shoot at a target because no I because I didn't spend that pre stage time like oh yeah run to this window shoot the things run to that window shoot the things like that was my yep. that was my visualization and I straight up just forgot to shoot at a target and it cost me you know two places in the match so um and so that that's the thing so now I'm 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 struggling personally to like find that happy middle ground and what I have found works the best for me is I get my stuff ready I basically have from like the time when I'm in the hole to the time when I'm done loading my mags and stuff for the next stage, that is Adam taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to stay focused. That is, you know, when I'm taking this seriously. All of the rest of those shooters and in between that stuff, that is Adam here having fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, I'm sitting with my friends. I'm having a good time, you know, like giving each other a bunch of shit. And then when I'm in the hole, mm -hmm. I try to kind of make that mental switch and get back to like, all right, okay, what's your stage plan? Visualize this thing five times. No screwing around. I know you kind of have it, but really put that thing right. in your head. Shoot it well. Get your guns ready for the next stage. Everything's set. Okay, you can go back to having fun. And that's and it's not like shooting's not fun. I mean, I I love the shooting part, but at the end mm -hmm. of the day, I'm I'm a very competitive person and I, and I want to do well. Yeah. So it's but I I think that's different for everybody. Um, like I, I was talking, I enjoy it much much more when I do well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's that's the thing. It's like there. The, I feel I it's feel like fishing. Well, fishing I feel like, sucks when you don't catch anything. Well, I feel like um <laughs> you know what, what what's the saying? It, it either ends of the social or either ends. Of oh man, it either ends of the financial spectrum. There lies a leisure class, oh. where it's like, yeah. um, where it's like, if you do super well, you're gonna have fun. But also, if you're just doing so bad that you're like, man, the hell with it. Like somehow that's also more fun than like in the middle where you're kind of doing well, but you're kind of making these mistakes yeah, and you're yeah. like chasing points and yeah. So it's uh, like I, I think it's such a personal thing. And like I, I was um, talking, you know, Mark Zebras on our squad today, and I was talking to him, and we're on the last stage, and and I I had a terrible time on the last stage. I made a couple of really dumb mental errors and it was one of those like end of the match. I'm trying to stay focused, but I didn't. And, you know, threw away what will probably turn into a couple places here. And, um, and so, and I went to Mark afterwards and he, you know, he's kind of sitting there and hanging out. I was like, you focus. And he's not, he's like, no, nah, I can't do it yet. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I can't get focused this early. Like my, the amount of time that I can stay focused is too short. If I do it now, right. it's going to be gone by the time I get up to shoot. Oh, and so that's a really good example of somebody who, like, he knows himself, right? Yeah. He's like, when I am on deck, that's mm -hmm. my time, or in the hole, or whatever it is for him. Like, for him, that is the time for him to get focused. And if he does it early, it kind of peaks, and it plateaus off the other side, and it, and it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So it, I feel like it is a very kind of long self-discovery process like figuring out the the mental side of that so right so what do you what do you do about um like managing your your squad mates you know like as far as uh i don't know like maybe maybe someone wants to give you a hard time for a stage performance or like what happened out there kind of thing mm -hmm. you know uh, maybe it was maybe it was poor or mm -hmm. um, even beforehand, like you're trying to get in the in the zone and do your visualizations. Someone's um, you know maybe 
hey, do you have any tape or do you know where this is? What's your stage plan? Mm-hmm. How, how do you politely uh, so, handle well, that? So for the, for the pre-shooting, like it's usually pretty clear. I'm like head down, eyes closed, pantomiming the stage. And if somebody says something to me, I, I honestly just straight up ignore them. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, this, mm-hmm. this is my time. I'm on deck. I'm about to shoot. Like this is the entire point of being here. Like, I just straight up ignore them. And, mm-hmm. and most people get that. They're like, they see that person, especially if you're one of the guys like me who does all the kind of the yeah. air gunning thing while they're standing there. It's like, all right, this guy is clearly thinking about things that I should not intrude on. Mm-hmm. Um, after the stage, honestly, that stuff doesn't really bother me. And I think everyone's different. Like, I've seen people get super pissed. Like, someone comes off and they get a good nature, like, dude, can't shoot the shotgun, huh? And, like, just have a complete yeah. come apart. That, that's me. Yeah. Like, I, I don't like that. Like, yeah. First off, like, that is not helping well, anything. Well, and so, I mean, well, this, <laughs> Please this, give me this goes into the five-minute rule, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like, give At least guy let me put my guns down so yes. I don't whack you. <laughs> <with> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like, don't cause Dave to get a match DQ. <laughs> well, and this is one of those things. It's like... I would argue justified. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd arbitrate that for you. You're like, <laughs> I got a video of this. Like, <laughs> the guy had it coming. Um, no, but so, yeah, I mean, I, most people are... Are, are they understand that mm-hmm. right they're like this dude just had a problem whatever um and it, a, a lot of that goes back to like you know if i'm if i know the people that i'm shooting with i know what everybody's temperament is and i'm mm-hmm. never like if somebody just goes out there and wrecks a stage i'm never gonna like give them shit like while they're walking back from the line i won't other people might um i had an ro do it to me on on a what? stage here yeah dude. obviously shooting the same division yeah oh man so you know, I honestly don't have a, a, a good answer. I'm, I just don't. Like, I, I do a really good job of kind of blowing that off because I think mostly when I have a wreck that's that bad, I'm so far in my own head that it's just like the Charlie Brown mom. Like, wah, 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 yeah. wah, Like, I basically don't hear anything that he was saying to me because yeah. I'm just like, God, that was embarrassing. Um, but, you know, at the same time, like, I told everybody on the squad today, I was like, guys, we're on the last stage of day two, and nobody's made a single short joke yet. I am severely, severely <laughs> disappointed in you guys. Well, that's, like, so, that's something completely different. Yeah, that's yeah, like that's, a, around, that's a totally you know? different thing. But, but yeah, I mean, if I mean, but this, seriously, this, like, two days and no one said a short joke. You believe that? Good right? lord! And then I think everyone is. I made a up. short joke when I saw your truck, but I didn't see you. Yeah, but you weren't on my squad, so you didn't count. Oh, damn. Yeah, no, nah. it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it. That's entirely a personal thing. How are you going to handle that? Yeah. Like, there's there's no way to coach that. And honestly, like, no matter what I told anybody, like, you're going to do what you're going to do because at that point you're so emotional. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, I've had that where I'm just like, if nobody was standing around, I would javelin the shotgun across the range. Yeah. Like, if I was here by myself, like, but you just can't. You <laughs> straight mm-hmm. up, like, you got to act like a freaking professional. Yeah. You know, my gear costs too much for me to want to javelin it. I would just shout a lot of swear words, you yeah. know, but. Yep. Uh, I try to, um, you know, if something does happen, like, you know, on, on the uh, on stage eight over there where I had all the uh, malfunctions on my rifle and had to mortar it a bunch of times, you know, I, I try to put my head down, use the bill of my cap to, like, signal, like, I don't want to be talk, talked yeah. to. But well, and that's the thing. It's like some, some people some, don't pick up on some cues. Some people just straight up do not pick up on social cues. It's like if you have that look on your face, like, if you say anything to me, you're going to get your head twisted off. 90% of people will be like, all right, don't talk to Dave right now. Like, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, but here, here's the problem, too, yep. and this is something I struggle with. So we're putting it out on the podcast now. Okay. And there are personalities that are yep. like, well, guess yeah. what I'm going to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to start screwing with Dave. Yeah, 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 exactly. But it's uh, – so, I mean, I, I've, ch- I've chosen this, this thing to do, and I've, I understand that. And uh, I choose how much of myself I put out there. Mm-hmm. But my nature is to be open. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for so. sure. Well, and, and I have dropped like a, dude, now's not the time. Like, yeah. I've done a couple of those before. Um, but mostly, I don't, I don't know if I just have like, you know, resting bitch face or what. But like <laughs> usually when I come off a stage and, it, and it's a train wreck, like I usually don't have anyone say anything yeah. to me. And I think I just kind of look like I'm not in the mood. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. I'll... T- I'll if if it's uh, if it's not bad, I'll say I need five minutes. Mm-hmm. Give me five minutes. We can mm-hmm. talk about this later or something like that. But yep. uh, but man, if it if it's just like you know egregious or oh, said yeah. with like a laugh or a smile, oh, yeah. well, you're I had almost getting punched. Well, so here's the thing. <laughs> so I had um, and I got I got no problem putting this one out there. Like last year, I went and shot pro am, which was a really important match to me. It was my first match out east. 
uh, it was the first time I'd ever gotten on a plane and flown anywhere for a match. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I was there, Amtac was put on a side stage, like I'm representing these companies. It was also in the middle of my first year as a like sponsored shooter. Um, and it was like, all right, I'm going to go out here to the East. I'm going to shoot against all these guys that I've never shot against before and go see what I'm really made of. And so I shoot two and a half days of just lights out shooting. I'm, I go into the last day, uh, five points ahead of Brian Nelson, who finished in third place. And so I'm like, I got no beaten business beating Brian. It's something like that. Right. Like I'm just shooting the match of my life. And I walk up to the last stage, which is, uh, the one on the golf course. And it had, yeah. um, yeah, so you shoot from the post and there's like four or five 200 yard plates uh-huh. and then a bunch of other stuff. Right. And I'm so excited. I got, uh, Brian was doing like the pre, pre, pre make ready match footage where like each of my stage videos are like eight minutes long of like interviewing people and stuff. Like, <laughs> by the way, I love that stuff. Like the beep and the mesh for like, I love the peanut gallery stuff. It's awesome. Oh yeah. And good so, time. you know, so he's like, Oh, how do you think people are going to do here? Like, how's that going to do it? And everyone's like, Oh, he's going to do real good. He's, you know, and I walked through, I'm like, I'm going to burn this stage to the ground. And I walked up and I, I did the math on it later. All I had to do to stay in the top five was put down a top hundred place stage. All of my stage finishes to that point were in the single digits. I think, I think I might've had one 11th or 12th. And, uh, at like, 60 ish percent beep buzzer goes off take two knees on that plate and i put 18 rounds at a 200 yard 10 inch (laughs) plate nothing and i moved on to the next one hit 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 moved back to the first one ran the rifle dry i still to this day have no idea what happened it wasn't an elevation change it was exactly the same distance exactly the same presentation as all the other ones could not hit that plate it was a 30 second stage i shot it in like 85 seconds plus i shot a fte on one of the pistol paper so um i shot like 42 percent on that stage and it dropped me from third to 11th wow so out of the medals out of the and i mean that place like the the medals that the australians bring out like that would have been a really big deal for me brazilians brazilians you're right sorry guys i apologize yeah those medals were awesome but yeah so i mean i was like i went from like the match of my life to like I just threw this thing away on, on like literally one target, and I, and I walked and it was just crickets, mm-hmm. right? I mean everybody knew, right? Right. And so I walked back and I just went, guys, I need more than five, and I I just walked off and I found a willow tree and I I probably sat there for like fifteen twenty minutes like thinking about some life choices. Yeah. And it was a stage, and I did think about the fact that it was a stage that took like one person to reset. It was a very simple reset stage, and everybody was just like. Dude, all the time you need, like, as I'm walking off. Mm-hmm. And I sat under that tree for a long time. And I was just like, what the hell just happened, right? I mean, it, like, it was just absolutely devastating. Like, I'd never, I'm, you know, I've said, like, oh, yeah, I kind of, I shot a no shooting. Really. I've never had anything like that in my entire life. And um, and that was, that was tough, man. Like, that was really, really hard. And that kind of colored the rest of my season shooting through because then I, um, you know, I went to Pro Am and or uh, or uh, Generation Three Gun after that, and just shot like a complete retard because I'm like, you no, know, now I got something to prove because I just threw that away, and so I shot like a 12th place finish where I should have been, uh, I don't know, like whatever I should have been at, but just like, all just dumb, dumb, dumb mental stuff, and mm-hmm. just really carried it into the next match, and that ability to have um either a really good performance because it works both ways, right? Like have a really good performance or a really bad performance. And not carry that into the next stage or the next mm-hmm. match is, I mean, like, maybe Jerry's good at it. Like, somebody's been shooting for that long. But, like, that is something that plagues everybody. Right. And it, and it's the people in those, in you know, that, that middle region that think that they're unique, that they feel terrible, that they had some terrible thing. Like, no, that happens to everybody. Like, everybody has that. And I think at some point that is the hardest part of the entire game. Because, like, at some level – all the people can kind of do all the stuff at give or take the same level, right? Like everybody in the top five at this match can draw a pistol about the same speed, can quad load a shotgun about the same speed, can split rifles about the same speed, but there is a an ability to manage yourself throughout the day mentally and execute exactly to the ability that you know you have, but not one line over that thing. And like I think about the three gun to me, is driving into a corner in a car going one mile an hour too fast. And you're like, 
do I stomp on the brakes? Do I lift off the gas? Do I push on the gas and, and like drive this thing <laughs> to the corner? It's like, what is the right move right here or we're going off this thing? Right. And and that's 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 a really hard thing. I mean, I think it's certainly where I'm at. Like, that is the crux for me. By far the hardest part. Mm-hmm. And I wish I had some awesome answer for, like, fixing that. Because if <laughs> I, d- I, I feel like I'm in a much better place now. Like, I shot a pretty good match. I kind of had one really bad stage, but everything else – went went pretty good kept my head in it and and that for me has been working is like when i'm i'm in the hole from then to my mags are done getting stuff for the next stage that is adam taking it seriously and the rest of it is adam having fun as friends and that for me personally that's about as close to the magic formula as i can really get mm-hmm. so. all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well adam i think uh I think that's a good place to uh to finish here. I think that's good uh uh it's going to give people a lot to think about. You know, cool. cuz it, cuz it is something that we do all all struggle with no matter what the level that we're at mm-hmm. in the game. So, it's uh you know, definitely uh something that I struggle with myself trying to figure out exactly how I want to uh you know, to manage my entire match and everything and you know, you're you're doing it. And uh, there's people in the room nodding right now. So <laughs> I think we're officially, yeah. We, these aren't like head nods. These are full body, like you need to get leave nods. No, no, no. So. This is uh, we agree <laughs> with what you're saying, nods. Oh, so. okay. All right, then. I just. All right. <laughs> well, thanks, Cindy. Appreciate it. Well, Adam, let's uh, let's do the thing we always do on the uh, on the show. Let's uh, let's wrap up with one final thought, one piece of advice we can give the uh, the audience. Okay. Um, well, if if we're gonna stick with the match management thing, I would say. So I just got all deep and stuff there. You're like, we're going to end with that. No, actually, we're going to do these other things. <laughs> no, we are going to end it there, but I'm going to give you a, a okay. one last opportunity to, uh, I would to say, say that you need to. The, the end of your match management, the post-match, watching your footage, looking for places to improve, um, talking to people who watch you shoot and, and learning from <coughs> them. And then th- the last thing that I always try to do is uh, I will email match directors or call them if I know them well enough or whatever – and give them a critique of their match because very few people actually, very few match directors actually get a legit, this is what I liked and this is what I didn't mm-hmm. like critique. And most of these people want to I found build that most match directors don't like that. Really? Yes. Interesting. I have, I, I have done that to, oh, I don't know, a dozen or so match directors, and I've never gotten anything really bad back. Weird. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe... Maybe you're just. Maybe not I shouldn't do it in did. public. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. So I mean, yeah, this is a much more private thing, and it's and it's and it's both, right? It's not like stage six was dumb and your RO on stage two was a jerk, and like no, it's like I liked all of these things and I didn't like all of these things, and like you know I appreciate all the work because dude, these guys put in a lot of work. Oh, totally like, for sure, totally. And then the last thing that I do is just making sure that you know I mean like we're sitting inside the clubhouse right now and they're setting up the prize table. Like you pull some stuff from the prize table, let that company know that you appreciate them putting stuff on the price table because otherwise they just send thousands of dollars of stuff to match and it vanishes into the ether mm-hmm. like let them know that you appreciate that the stuff. tough part is uh getting the uh the poc because you know a lot a lot of times we'll just tag someone on facebook or yeah. instagram yeah and sometimes that's like a 19 year old dude yeah. that doesn't give an s about exactly uh, shooting at all exactly so yeah it's i, the, I uh, email the company like if i find the contact form if i can find uh, like the email, you know, the, the three guns such as if you can, I've emailed match directors before and been yeah. like, yo, who's a sponsor coordinator for, you know, whoever the heck and actually send them an email and say mm-hmm. thanks. And like, Hey, this is what I did with this. Texas three gun was really cool about that. They yeah. gave all the contacts so you could send. Thank That's awesome. And That's awesome. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's good. Let all people know. So just, yeah. <laughs> I like, yeah, let them know. We appreciate them. We appreciate you, Cindy. We do. We're, we're going to be doing that. We're getting permission from them to give their all right. Oh, cool. Right All right, Adam. Thanks for uh, for spending your afternoon here before the prize table in yeah, this uh, nice, cool air conditioning. It's gonna be hard and, to uh, leave. I know, <laughs> sipping uh, sipping line and kugels. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be hard to leave. Yeah, this is a good one, dude. Um, I got a lot from this. I know I'm gonna listen to this. Uh, you know, obviously in the editing process, but but again, uh, before and after matches. Appreciate cool. your time, man. This is a good one. Thank yeah, you, man. Yeah, for sure. Hey, before you take off, check out the show notes at 3gunshow.com slash episode 216. And if you're heading to Red October or the Big Ben Blast and Dash, I'll see you there. This podcast is brought to you by Armalite, the original 
Armalite rifles put the AR in AR-15. The rifles themselves come with 1 and 8 twist barrels, match barrels 18 inch or 13 and a half inch with a uh, 15 inch or 12 and a half inch handguard. Timney trigger, Luth AR stock, adjustable uh, gas system, tunable comp, a patented tunable comp. This thing's ready to go right out of the box for a three gun with no additional modifications other than putting on a nice optic. I myself use a Vortex Viper PST 1-6 to when I'm shooting TAC Ops or their Spitfire when I'm shooting Limited. Check them out at Armalite.com. Quick reminder that if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, Podcast Addict, or wherever you get your podcast content so you will always get the very latest. Thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'm Dave Hartman, and I'll see you on the range. If you are finished, unload show clear.